just took it out. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the uh, Board of Selectmen meeting today, uh, April 24th. We actually opened an executive session earlier to approve um, executive session minutes and uh, respect to um, uh, collective bargaining updates from the town manager relative police, fire, dispatch, and DPW unions. Because an open meeting may have had detrimental effects on the bargaining positions of the board. We also um, discussed uh, the strategies with contract negotiations with non-union personnel. And Norman uh, Kamalo and Elaine Lazarus were present. So we'd now like to uh, convene now an open session. First, uh, I'd like to start by um, doing the Pledge of Allegiance. And I believe the Girl Scouts are going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you mind uh, taking it over for us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks. Thank you, ladies. Wonderful job. That's great. <laughs> Public forum, residents are invited to share ideas, opinions, or ask questions regarding town government. Is anybody in the audience want to come up? Well, I, I, I was told oh, no, we could you, you, know, you have to come up and, and introduce yourself because there may be a, one or two people in town that okay. don't know you. <laughs> That's okay. Okay. Hi, I'm Margot Roman, and I have MASH in Hopkinton. And I've been here in Hopkinton for over 37 years and had the practice there since been practicing uh, the veterinary clinic uh, since 82, but the building for quite a few years. But what I, what I was, you know, I was talking to the clerk's office and I mentioned um, about this thing that's been bugging me forever and I feel like maybe it's time for the town to do something about it. And it's basically the house, the, the, the EMC building that's been empty for 18 years that's on South Street. And when I owned the corner lot there before I built my veterinary clinic, I bought that and tried to get zoning on it um, for the first few years that I lived in, in Hopkinton. And I didn't get zoning there because I was going to increase traffic on South Street, and that was before EMC came in. So when EMC came in, basically everything went their way, and they got everything they wanted, and this, I own the corner house, and I felt like there, you know, I never was able, I'm happy where I am, and I love the, where I did, but it took, it was a lot of fighting that went on to get that space. And then I approached EMC after the building, was, after we, they had the seven houses there, and I approached them about you know, buying us out and doing fair value for the houses. And they actually didn't do that, which was very heart, hurtful to me, both financially and everything. That's water under the bridge. So after the building was completed, um, I, they, never, they never occupied it. It's been empty for 18 years. I approached them after about a year and a half and said, let's do something with this building really valuable. Let's try to find some reason to use this building and not leave it empty because they tore my house down. It was supposed to be given to Habitat for Humanity. It never got given to Habitat for Humanity. So I felt like I lost, I lost money selling the house to them. I gave them the house and then this property is still empty. So you know, I s told them what goes around comes around. You've got to do something good with this property and anyway, it's still been empty. So every year I approached them with a project, that the same project over and over again for about six years. And every time I went there, it was going to be filled the next six months. So I drive by there. I don't think it's been ever used except for parking for Marathon. And it's wasted space in our town. It could be providing services for, for a lot of other reasons and, play, and things that we could do in the town. It's a tax write-off for, for, I'm sure, now for Dell and for EMC. But I still wanted something of purpose to be done. And so what I approached them 18 years ago was to put, to make a university there and leave the sign. You know, we are, as an integrative doctor, we're always looking for other ways to try to make the body stay healthier. And as we look at what is happening in our country, Whole Foods is all over the place. People are going to acupuncturists, people are getting massages, people are doing stuff, but a lot of the science of it is not really formed yet. So people have their theories and have their, and there's, there's universities. There's nothing in Massachusetts or really on the East Coast that looks at the science behind energy medicine and what's involved in the ability of the brain to work properly and the gut brain 
connection, which is what my practice does a lot of. We do a lot of microbiome restorative therapy. We do a lot of oxidative therapies. But this is, there's no place to really study it on, in the United States. There's no place to do it. So why not take one of the highest quality of education in this area and leave the sign, if the sign could be there, Energy Medicine College, and bring and use this to bring scientists together and do something that would help the well-being, the health. We have so much opiate overdosing. If we could just take some of the integrative modalities and utilize them for pain management, it works. It totally works. So why aren't we doing that instead of giving people opiates? There's so much depression and so much suicide that's happening. If we can do something to give people more mental health support, let's do it. So that's where okay. I think if, if this is not the reason this building has stayed empty for so many years, why not use it for something in our town and allow us to, to benefit in a positive way versus just parking lot Well, I think we can, uh, you know, um, we can uh, ask Ms. Glasser if, or, and Mr. Kamal if they would approach Dell and see if they would do anything with it for, to help out the town. But then again, it is private property. They do own it, and they really are allowed to live in it or not, just like any of us. If we don't want to, we want to stay in our summer house or our winter house, and we don't want to, <laughs> you know, as long as they keep it up and, pay and they pay their taxes, there's not much we can do other than ask them to be a good Yeah, neighbor. I mean, I, I haven't asked Dell. I mean, I worked on EMC for, I don't know, six or seven years, and mm -hmm. it was always the plan was going to be in in six months. and. You know, after 18 years, the building is already aged, you know, and, and, yeah. but why couldn't it have been used for 18 years and given back to the community yeah. except for taxes? So. Well, I know the state police do use it for, for training their dogs, and they, they oh, go in that's, there. That's so I do know that, they, that it is used, because I remember I drove by one time, and I was concerned that there were uh, a lot of police cars in front of there. Mm -hmm. And then come to find out that it wasn't that it was just a training exercise. Yeah, but that's sort of a you know it could be doing a lot more for our for for, for everybody. I, I don't want to turn the public session session into too much of a discussion mm -hmm. back and forth, but I, I you know I will comment. Um, I don't know what the circumstances are within mm -hmm. EMC Dell why that beautiful building has stood vacant. Um, I do know that you know we as a town would love to have all those properties because there's a lot more involved than just paying the taxes. I mean, that could be filled with jobs and all the economic stimulus that that, that presents. So, you know, you're certainly not alone in wanting to see some activity on that site. But, you know, again, from the years I was on the planning board, and particularly with Legacy Farms, and there were, you know, many different suggestions about they should put into this or they should put into that, or there should be a Whole Foods, you know, it, it's hard for a municipality to pick a particular business and say you should you should go in here right. that entity still has to want to do that right. um, and and we could certainly you know if the property were if, if they made it clear that they were looking for some use mm -hmm. or some tenants um, towns can certainly try to advocate or make contact mm -hmm. contacts and encourage uh, and create a good environment but um, I think your idea is really interesting. Um, it, it's just not necessarily within the municipality's domain to say we will do thus and such. Well, no, yeah, no. I'm, but I mean, I'm, the reason I picked EMC because it's Energy Medicine College, yeah. right? But I, I thought about it as, yeah. as if you could figure out how the brain worked mm -hmm. and the mind worked and utilize it for software and hardware development, mm -hmm. they may come up with some discovery that because these scientists are working on something that could enhance their whole and their whole development but anyway it's been 18 thank you years very thank, much. You. Okay. Take care. thank you thank you so is does anybody else want to come up oh absolutely Hello. and you are I I'm Jean Birchman um, I am here tonight to talk to you about the center school I have been talking with John and Norman about um, our farewell to center school event and um, we have planned it now for September 15th, which is the same day as Poly Arts and Hawkington Family Day. So we are working with both of those committees to make a really great day um, in Hawkington because we know so many people will come back for all of those events. So um, I was able to work with Norman. So we, as, we, as we started the planning, we realized that the school committee will not have control or custody of the center school in September. So um, we realized that we needed to ask the town if we could use the building um, and let people tour it. So uh, 
John with Norman, and Norman, um, I believe, said that you know he could straight he could make those arrangements for us to be able to have access to the building. But asked me just to step in and let you all know that that's what we're planning. We have a great committee with people who have grown up in town, who have taught at the school, who are on Poly Arts, who are on Hopkins Family Day, who are on, you know representing the schools. So um, it, we're just going to have probably an open house and tours and an official turning over of the key from the school committee to the board of selectmen so that's all just want to put it on your radar screen you'll receive a much more formal invitation in the months to come awesome thank okay. you very much thanks okay open mic night heather back and library director how are you all I couldn't make it on the agenda, so I just wanted to take a couple minutes of your time during the public forum. Um, I want to let the board know about the library's long-range plan process and invite you all to participate. So our current strategic plan is expiring in June, and of course, a lot of that dealt with getting into the new building, getting ready for it. We have the new building. We have a lot of opportunities. We have a lot of people paying attention and a real explosion in use, and I will pass out for you afterward just some numbers to show you the kind of thing I'm talking about it's been extraordinary um, because this is such a key moment for the evolution of the library we really want to make sure we're getting broad feedback from across the community and being very thorough as we start to look at what our priorities should be for the next three years or so so I wanted to personally inform the board of this project invite you to participate we will be doing a townwide survey available online and on paper launching within the next couple of weeks we'll also be doing a number of focus groups and interviews with residents from across the community and key community leaders um, and our goal is to get thorough feedback about the town's aspirations for the library so that the staff and our trustees can set goals that are response to the community's unique needs so I just want to make you aware um, I hope that when that information comes out we'll be putting it on our website or social media through the media in general um, if you could take a few minutes to share your thoughts with us and your hopes and you know talk to the people you know and encourage them to do the same we'd be very grateful and I'll probably be back here in the summer to tell you what it is we're planning to do and what we heard from the community thanks so, and, and next time just just ask us and we'll put you on the agenda oh, yeah. I, I asked you guys were a little busy tonight and I was a little last minute <laughs> so I don't mind but here is this is what I want to hand out to you very quickly the front side is numbers the back side is visuals it's the same information but this is our first four months open compared to the same time period right before we moved to town the last four months in the building. And I've highlighted the rows where the use has doubled for more. And that's about half of our statistics. So it's been really quite something. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wish we had these numbers at work. <laughs> Anybody else? Oh, excellent. And you, uh, I, 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 I too have reading I've materials seen you in for you before. students up there. <laughs> I dare you to ask him who he is. What's that? I said I dare him to ask you who you, who you, who you are. Oh, Joe Regan, yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes I forget, you know, get, <laughs> getting old. Yeah. Yeah. Before I hand this to you, let me ask you a couple of questions. How many miles of road do we have in this town to maintain? Don't be shy now, speak up. I would say more than 10. 117. 120, we have 110. This is John Westling. I asked him for some information on what the DPW does. Dues does. I won't give you, I won't make you. Now, does that include the ones we're going, we may, may or may not accept at the annual that time meeting? I don't know. I mean, the dirt roads I just wanted that to are being a plow. This is for discussion later, if you don't mind. I have something that we're going to discuss right now. This is all relative. John might have told you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Joe. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. This is all relative to trying to get a tree department going in this town, people. We, I guess I can sit down. Huh? Oh, I got to give you these too. Sorry. We desperately need one. Okay. I think after this storm, I'm sure you would agree that the contractors, Richie and I and JB, were all out trying to clean up the sides of the road. We thought we had it all done. I'm going to keep one because I'm shy one. No, no, no. With no one. Okay. And it was very frustrating trying to be out there, trying to work on roads that are this wide because of all the years, all the trees have grown back in. The trees are getting bigger and bigger. 
We've talked about this quite a while amongst ourselves. The um, DPW, John Westling agrees. We do need a distinct department dedicated to doing trees, okay? The big trees, they're over the wires. We have Eversource in town. If you've seen all the blue marks, they are doing those for us at no charge. And those are dead, hazardous trees, not gonna cost us a thing. What do we need to do with responsibilities of a tree department and why the town desperately needs one? Removal of dead, dying, and structurally compromised trees. People don't quite understand. The dead and the dying is pretty obvious. Structurally compromised, a tree, we have health and we have structure. The tree can be healthy, green, beautiful. You go around the backside and it's about 10% live tissue. The rest of, it's, rest of it is rotten inside. Structurally compromised, these are the ones that come down. Cutting back the growth along the edge of the road. Our, our DPW guys are busy. If you read those later, you'll see all the responsibilities. This is what a tree department can do. All these small trees that are coming in and growing, you should have been out during that storm. If you were, anybody go out and see how impossible it was to travel? You had to plow those roads and see how impossible it was. I got $1,500 of damage to my truck between a tree that was leaning too far and a busted mirror on the other side. Not a happy camper, but that's a story for another time. Clear the line, clear line of sight of intersections. You know what it's like to come upon the intersections. And the growth this year is gonna be brutal. We got a lot of water, we're waiting for some warm weather. You gotta creep out, creep out. You should be able to see far enough down the line to site to be able to pull out without getting T-boned. Maintaining a minimum height. I, I knew it was somewhere around this. 16 feet over the public way, people. Limbs. It, six feet in some of these roads. I mean, a pickup truck is hitting them. What are people doing? If you go for your walk, if you go jogging, you're on your bike, you're getting closer to the middle of the road because of all this brush that's growing out. The cars are getting closer to the middle of the road because we haven't cut. And these saplings at one time are now bigger than three inches. And our bylaws read here, public hearing. Unless the tree warden deems are a hindrance to travel, then you don't need the hearing. But chapter 87, paragraph five. Know it very well. <laughs> Grinding the stumps in the public way that would hinder traffic. We have, a, we have a grinder I bought one of our tree warden and some mobile operations. Maintaining clearance growth under communication cables. Why is that important? The DPW people are not allowed to touch anything that's in contact with wires, even if it's a communication cable, and rightfully so. You're not gonna get electrocuted the communication cable, but two sections down, there could be a live wire on those cables. And a DPW guy standing in the water and he reaches up to make a cut, guess what that electricity goes right to ground, and unfortunately he's in the way to go to ground. Tree people, tree department, arborists are educated in the ways of electrical hazards, EHAP, electrical hazard awareness programs. In-house response to emergency calls. We had two this afternoon, one of uh, Philip Jalowski called, he said, Joe, we got two hangers. If they're gonna pop up, we got a lot of hangers around this town. We drop what we're doing, we answered that call, it was one hour worth of work. If I decide to build it, I don't know if I will or not, it's gonna be a four hour minimum, I probably won't. I don't build a lot of those things. It's still my town. And I know I'm not a townie, Brandon, I understand that. You're working on it. We're working on it, but we're an almost townie anyway. You're getting there. Planting appropriate, appropriate trees in the correct spot. I cannot tell you how many of the trees that have been planted in these subdivisions are now encroaching. John, you and Brian, you come out the Cowell Road, there's a sidewalk there. How many, when's the last time you saw the sidewalk? Everything is grown right over the end of the Cowell Road on West Main. These are all gonna be cut back, and some of that is landscaping that had been put in years ago. It's not wild trees. People are gonna be upset. These have gotta be cleared. Where to begin? That's why I'm here to ask you. Where do we start? The Board of Selectmen could, hopefully, appoint a committee to present a plan for organizing a tree department, which would include personnel, I didn't type that, I'll get my wife help. Personnel, not personal, and relevant equipment for the purpose of maintaining roadside trees, and also explore the possibility, Al Rogers put me onto this, and it's a good idea, of a tree cemetery and park department that would be dedicated to those three. You set them up. No? I'm done, what do you have to say about that? <laughs> Joe, I learned a long time ago not to talk to you when your arms are crossed. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. He could throw me up the window in a minute. Where do we start? Where can we, as a, as a citizen, where can I start with your blessing to try to get something rolling? I'm not even talking money, I'm talking in the future, but as soon as we can. Well, Joe, usually at, at this is when the community asks us 
And if it's a simple question, we can try and answer it. But when you're asking us when we can, we can look into starting a, not only one department, but maybe three departments, on a, and, and especially this year where, where we had uh, a, a, an outrageous budget process. That's why I said we weren't talking money today. I'm looking right. down the future, Joe, so, and appoint a committee, not, not for you guys, to get somebody, citizens at large, I would love to be on it. Somebody from person, uh, what do they call them now? Human resources, not personnel anymore. See how backward I yep. am? Somebody, several, several people to get together and see what we can do to get the ball rolling. That's all, John. That's all I'm looking for. All right, well, how about well, if we do this? How about if we ask Elaine and Norman and the team to poll the surrounding towns, similar towns, similar sized towns, similar geographic towns, and see what sort of is done elsewhere uh, in re with respect to tree management? Sort of how, what's a norm in the state? Maybe there is no norm, and then we can be the leaders if we put something together. But let's start with what other people do and use that as a learning curve for like what that, we yeah. do here, or what we start to look at here, if we look at something. Norman? If, if I may, um, Joe, thank you so much for bringing this issue up. Uh, one suggestion, perhaps, is the realization that the DPW is currently putting together a strategic plan for the department, defining scope of services, based on the needs that have been identified in the community, and perhaps use that as the avenue for evaluating the suggestions that you have put forth. Cool. Good. Thanks. I like it, Joe. Thank you for all your work. Okay. Thank you, Joe. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Is there anybody else that would like to come up to address the Board of Selectmen? Okay, then. With that, The Board of Selectmen will now consider approving a request from the 7th grade Girl Scout Troop 65040 to plant a garden on town-owned property under the jurisdiction of the Board of Selectmen to actually a portion of the Center Trail for a silver, silver award project. The troop would like to spread awareness of the decline, de <laughs> declining bee population. Welcome, Scouts. So, um, as you just said, we are a Girl Scout troop of eight seventh grade cadets. Um, we're working on our Silver Ward, which is the second highest achievement in Girl Scouts. Um, for our Silver Ward, we would like to spread awareness of the declining bee population and the reasons that it is happening. Um, as part of this awareness, we would like to start a community bee garden on the center trail with plants that are good for bees. We have met with Jane Moran, chairperson of the Upper Charles Trail Committee, and we picked out a location right here, hopefully you can see it better there, um, and our area that we picked out is at the end of the center trail near the respite center parking lot. The area is approximately 10 feet by 15 feet. Our troop will clear the site of any leaves or other debris and cutting a single tree that is less than two feet tall and add two to six inches of loam, uh, plant bee friendly flowers and use field stones as border. We have contacted and consulted the Upper Charles Trail Committee and the Garden Club for assistance and will soon be contacting the Respite Center for getting permission to use the parking lot. We will also be writing to neighbors to let them know about our proposed project. We would like to begin working on this project on the first weekend of May 2018. We would like to know if you approve of this project, and if so, if there are any additional improvements or suggestions that you will grant us permission to pursue our project. Thank you for your consideration. Excellent. Thank you, ladies. Any questions? Mr. Chair, uh, the way the young lady pointed that picture at the camera was fascinating Absolutely. and very well done. I wouldn't have thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> so you got the whole town to see it, which is great. <laughs> Uh, I think it's an excellent idea, and I applaud your initiative, ladies. And uh, I don't know if we can vote it this evening because it wasn't on the agenda per se, but uh, I can't see why we wouldn't do it. So oh, is it on the agenda? I thought we were still in public comment. No, 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 we love public comment. Okay, it is on the agenda, never mind. It is. Um, so with that, I'd be inclined to find some kind of motion to get Okay, well, let's, let's get through the questions, and then, and then here's the, uh, if you, there's, there's your motion when you want to do it. Mr. Tinson. Well, welcome, ladies, and thank you very much for your suggestion. Um, 
I think it's wonderful to see you know, the next generation of people from Hopkins get involved in in um, in charity work and giving back. I think it's a great idea, and it's a wonderful location. Uh, so I, you have my uh, you have my backing on this 100. percent Thank you very much. I have two questions. Um, have you identified what varieties are going to be bee friendly, or, or is the garden club going to be making those uh, suggestions? And if you know, I'd be curious as to what some of those plants are for my own garden. Um, so yes, we met with um, a couple people from the garden club. Um, we used the internet and we read books. Um, we found a couple like the Black Eyed Susan, um, Chives, Swamp Milkweed, and bee balm, butterfly bush, and we kind of worked with, you know, where we have and like the sunlight and, you know, how much um, maintenance they need. And um, we met with the people from the garden club and uh, they said they're going to donate theirs, so it's all donations. So. That's great. And my other question and, and maybe a suggestion is gardens um, need maintenance. Those weeds come in pretty fast and I'm assuming you ladies will eventually grow up and move on. We hope that garden's going to be there for a long time. So I wondered if you had uh, given any, any thought to ongoing maintenance for it and I had a thought that with the respite center being right across the street it might be a nice thing if they would be willing to partner with you. Um, as an, on an ongoing thing to help to help keep that. Uh, have you looked at maintenance at all and had any thoughts on that? Um, so actually the respite center was one of our ideas. Um, and also we could pass it on to another troop. Mm -hmm. Great, mm -hmm. great, excellent. Mrs. Starr. This is a great idea. I think that uh, you know over the last couple of decades especially, uh, the general public has become more and more aware of uh, bees as an indicator of the health of the environment as well as a uh, partial provider of the health of the environment. So this is fantastic. I think you guys have done a lot of research on this. Your presentation was fantastic. Um, one question I have for you is, well, maybe two. Do you anticipate uh, attracting certain types of bees? Uh, are they non-stinging varieties? My only concern is that we have a trail where people are going to be walking and if all of a sudden there are a lot of bees there there may be some people who are a little bit afraid of bees <laughs> so that's my only my only concern there and I was wondering if you've thought of that at all yeah so um, our thing is we are going to have like all bees like we have different plants for different types of bees mm -hmm. And if you don't bother the bees, they won't bother you, and it should be far enough from the trail that okay. it won't be harmful. So. All right. Great. Well, you job. could also put up a sign that says no bees. No <laughs> just, just, yeah, keep yeah. them off. Just keep them off. No <laughs> petting. No bees. Have the bee crossing <laughs> sign up the road a little bit. <laughs> Excellent. That, Scouts, thank you very much. My, my mother loved the Garden Club. Oh, my gosh. That was one of her favorite things. That's great that, you, that you're coordinating all of these other clubs. And, and really, the, as, as, as was mentioned before, the presentation was fabulous. Um, and you, you, you uh, girls really know your, your stuff. And um, we're looking forward to uh, having this. So with that... Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that the Board of Selectmen approve the request of Girl Scout Troop 65040 to plant a garden on town-owned property under the jurisdiction of the Board of Selectmen as described this evening. Second. Any further discussion? Every none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Congratulations. Thanks, guys. Thanks, girls. Thanks for coming. Good luck. Thank you very much. Okay. Oh, jeez. Okay. Let's uh, let's keep this let's keep this going. Actually, this is uh, so oh, really these nice girls should learn that uh, those cookies should have been handed out before the book. <laughs> As a rule. Excellent. Thank you very much for coming. Hello, this is a great one. The uh, principal planner appointment. The Board of Selectmen will confirm the appointment of Georgia Wilson as our new principal planner. 
Uh, is this uh, Mr. Kamalo or Ms. Lazarus who's going to do the introduction? Oh, Mr. Kamalo always has great introductions. <laughs> oh, you, you want him to write, write any further resumes or anything else, letters of recommendation? Amazing what he can say about people. Yes, through the chair, I am requesting the board affirm the appointment by the town manager of Georgia Wilson as the town's next principal planner. Um, as you know, uh, Jennifer Beck, yeah, Jennifer Beck is the former principal planner. She left for uh, a, a new position in, in New Bedford, okay. Bridgewater. Yeah, Bridgewater, New Bridgewater. And um, here is, I think, a listing of the observations that we have made so far uh, regarding uh, Georgia Wilson's qualification to be the town's next principal planner. Uh, through the interviews, uh, she confirmed to us her diverse planning background, a strong analytical and problem-solving skills, excellent communication, understanding of Hockington's social, economic, and cultural uh, characteristics, and also she confirmed to us her mediation and negotiation skills. She has a Master's of Science degree from the UMass Oh, in fact, she's currently studying to obtain a Master's of Science from the UMass Boston in Urban Planning and Community Development. She possesses a bachelor's degree in Environmental Studies from LaSalle College. And I think if you combine that with what we had in the interview, we are strongly uh, convinced that we are hiring a planner with all the required skills to do all the kinds of work that come before a planning board. Uh, she is able to represent the community perspective, uh, the conservation perspective, and also has very strong, sound land use planning uh, principles. Her references, in summary, confirmed to us that she has now found her calling in planning. Um, she also has confirmed that uh, she is willing to uh, succeed in growing her responsibilities. She started off working as a uh, park ranger. Exactly, <laughs> as a park ranger, and rose through the ranks having worked for um, the conservation, uh, on the conservation side, uh, and then graduated to the position of, of planner uh, for the town of Denver. And with that, I am recommending to the board uh, that you affirm the town manager's appointment of uh, Georgia Wilson as the town's next planner. And again, as we heard from your references, you have found your calling in planning. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, I appreciate that. Welcome. Mr. Sasari, where were you a park ranger? Uh, I was a park ranger for the town of Danvers. Oh, yeah? Yep, yep. What did that involve? Oh, let's see. Uh, uh, taking care of barn animals, not the most glamorous. Uh, <laughs> barn tours, a lot of children's programs, environmental programs. Um, and then, you know, backyard barbecue parties, maintaining that. Everything from picking up trash to taking care of kids and doing night owl tours, stuff like that. And you'd yeah. rather do this. <laughs> Sometimes I ask myself the same question. Uh, yeah. You know, principal planners do that here also. <laughs> Tuesdays for the selectmen's meeting. Backyard barbecues. <laughs> well, um, welcome to Hopkinton and best of luck. Thank you. Yeah, we are so glad to have you here, Georgia. Um, we just got one of our notices that mentioned the increase in black bears in the 495 area. So who knows? You may be doing that too. <laughs> I'm also a certified animal control Safety. officer. <laughs> I have that in my bag. No, but I, I'm sure you know Hopkinton is, is a really growing community, and uh, you know the planning board has been a very busy board in recent years. Um, so we're we're really glad to finally have that position filled because it's it's very important. Um, and you can also learn at the knees of the master, Elaine being here, who was our former planner. And I have to tell you, when Elaine left, I thought the world was going to end. Um, nobody knows more than Elaine, so you, you're very <coughs> fortunate to come into a community with, with such a good, uh, a good backup uh, if you have questions. And, and we're just really pleased to have that position filled. Welcome to Hopkinton. <clears throat> so I feel the same way. Um, you know, we looked at your qualifications and uh, your references, and, and everything looked really good. And we're excited to have someone to come in with some energy, and not implying that the prior 
uh, planners didn't have energy. There's no implication there at all. Um, but anytime we can bring someone externally in with a maybe a different point of view of some things, I think that's exciting. So, uh, as Ms. Wright said, uh, welcome to Hawkington. Thank you. I think this is great. Welcome to Hawkington, Georgia. Um, a little bit of business, if I could, with my colleagues and Mr. Kamal, and I'll come back uh, to Georgia. So, the hiring committee for this position was yeah. There were there were two uh, rounds of interviews. The first round of interviews, we had Elaine, Corby, Josh, John Westerlin, and Christine Merrill, who's the HR generalist. The second round of interviews, we had John Ferrari, the chair of the planning board, Elaine. Maria Casey and Don McAdams. Yeah, so that was the reason for my question. So the planning board is also a duly elected body that she'll be working very closely with. So they weighed in on this, and everybody's good there, and that's all. Everyone feels good about that as well, right? No reason not to. I'm just asking. John Ferrari represented the planning board in the process and was satisfied with this selection. Okay, great, great. Um, so with that. Uh, this is a big position at Hopkinton, a very big position at Hopkinton. It's one of the fastest growing, if not the fastest growing communities in Massachusetts. We're right at 495 and the, and the pike, as we all know. Uh, so we've got the location, we have the natural resources, we've got great residents. We've got more residents now than we've ever had. We're up to 17.5 or so uh, and growing. There's a lot of sensitivity in town about that growth. And um, we've put in a lot more dense housing in recent years. And so those kinds of questions will come up. Um, are you playing music in no, the background? No, it's someone else. <laughs> Someone's ring. That's pretty funny. <laughs> Is that like the uh, Jeopardy uh, thing? <laughs> doo -doo -doo. Anyway, my point, George, is you're, you're stepping into a really big job, a yeah. really important job. And I think you've got an excellent background for this. And uh, <laughs> you're going to do very, very well once we get this going. Thank and we turn this music off. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only planner that's ever come in with their own theme song. <laughs> that that you know, may be my you like the WWF I, I think it should be Rocky, <laughs> actually. The yeah. theme Rocky. <laughs> but welcome to Hopkinton. We're really excited to have you. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining. Yeah, I, I also, well, I've spoken to you before. I saw, I saw you in action yesterday at the uh, planning board meeting. So thank, you, thank you very much for jumping right in. Thank you. You know, one of the one of the, the um, great things about Hopkinton, we, we even have a, our overarching vision, and I carry it with me all the time. And and, and Brian actually just hit hit part of it. You know, it's uh, Hopkinton is a vibrant, welcoming community, centrally located in New England, nestled 26.2 miles west of Boston. We're endowed with open space, natural resources, facilities, and programs to promote a well-educated, healthy community. We're respectful of our past, engaged in our present, and actually actively preparing for our future. And, and as, as Brian said, you know, it's a really important position. Mm -hmm. And uh, you come very well qualified and, and um, uh, very well um, uh, respected. And so thank you very much for joining us, and uh, we look forward to uh, working with you. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you very much, Jordan. This is great. We're sorry about this distraction okay. of this music, but it's just a I just want to know where it's coming from, too. <laughs> we do. But anyway, so thank you. So just in case it's your phone, I'll let you get up and check. <laughs> okay, who's going to claim that ringtone? <laughs> no one's going in that direction. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> when does Georgia start, by the way? Yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> Good. Excellent. Okay, it stopped. Help them call back, would you? <laughs> <laughs> so that's why Chief was back there. Oh, so that, is that the Chief's phone? Okay, let's get um, let's continue. Uh, Consent agenda. Do we have to vote? Mr. Yeah, Chair. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. We do. You, you took my motions document. I move that the Board of Selectmen confirm the town manager's appointment of Georgia Wilson as our principal planner for the town of Hopkinton. Second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Welcome to Hopkinton. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
So, Marie, are you taking responsibility for that? I'll neither confirm nor deny. Okay. <laughs> 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 Whose was it? Maria's. <laughs> 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 Maria, that what? is the most happy, ringtone I've ever heard. So good for you. <laughs> You're a very happy person. That's great. Control was slightly slow. Oh, well, you know. He was tapping his foot, yes. <laughs> exactly. Even Joe was slow. Even Joe was slow. <laughs> <Even Joe was smiling. laughs> okay. He's cramping. <laughs> All right. So, a little my theme music here. <laughs> on our consent agenda today, we've got a we got a stack of them. <laughs> the board of selectmen will consider accepting the following gifts: a thirty-five thousand dollar gift from the Friends of Hopkinton Seniors to the Senior Center for a nutrition program. Salaries of twenty-five thousand dollars and a wellness program for ten thousand um, dollars. A parade permit from Hallie Freckert on behalf of the girls on the run grade of Boston for a celebratory, celebratory 5K road race event starting ending at the Hopkinton High School from 10 a.m. to 12 noon on Saturday, June 9th. From Michael Whalen, sir, on behalf of the Veterans Celebration Committee for my favorite one, the Veterans Day, <coughs> Memorial Day ceremonies be held Monday, May 29th, beginning at Evergreen Cemetery in Woodville at 9.45 a.m. The parade portion of the ceremonies will begin at 11.25 a.m. at Mount St. Auburn Street and can conclude at the Town Common at 12 noon. Number five, the Board of Selectmen consider accepting the resignation of Keisha Vaughn and Heather Strother for the Hopton Youth Commission and thank them for the service. And the Board of Selectmen consider appointing Don, Don Sheldon McNeil to the Veterans Celebration Committee to a term to, expi to expire June 30th, 2018. Um, anybody want to break out any of those? Did you include the minutes, which were the first item? Uh, yeah, well, I, I'm sorry, I passed on that one. Yes, the, the minutes was the first one. I was, it, it, was, it was the page broke right there. Mr. Chair, yes. is uh, Mr. McNeil here this evening? He is right yeah, I'd there. Yeah, like to break that out, please. Yeah, I'd like to break out three subsection B. Bravo. Three B. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I would like to break out uh, three A. The girls on the run. Okay. So with, with that, that would be one, two, five, and. Six. One, two, and five. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Those three carry. Okay, so number 3A. I think that was, that That's was right. you. That's you. Yeah. Uh, is there someone here for Girls on the Run? No. Okay. Um, well, I, I will just state a couple questions because most of the documents say Saturday, June 9th, but in the materials that were sent, their flyer says June 3rd, which is a Sunday. So I want to make sure that we're approving the correct date. Oh, you think it's an old one? Yeah. So we are quite sure, Mr. Kamalu, that their application is for Saturday. June 9th. That is, two, that is June 3, 2017. So it's yes. an old one. That yeah. was just their example then. Okay. Um, I know the, the other question I had had on it, and, and I don't know if anybody here knows the answer, because um, they showed the route and there was discussion of road closures, and it was not clear to me whether up at the center of town they were going to run down Main Street or they were going to use Marathon Way. Uh, that would make a difference. Marathon Way wouldn't interfere with traffic. Main Street would, but we don't. There's no one here to answer that. So Does it say Main Street? Well, did they have it? It, it didn't say. I'm just looking at the map, and I couldn't tell from the map. My sense is they're probably going to want one lane so they can cross the start line. You know, Mr. Kamala, did they have run this last year? Oh, they must have. There was a set in the 2017. Yes, I believe this is this is a race that the board has considered before. Well, I mean, I, so you probably uh, asked these questions one, last year. No, I don't remember this. I, number one, I, I'm sorry that there's no one here representing the group. Um, and number two, I know just comments from the fire chief requesting that next time there be more time.
to evaluate this, and I don't know whether we should be setting a deadline, a, a um, you know, a deadline date for parade applications. Well, we did. No, we have. Th we asked for thirty days, mm -hmm. and so this well, is this. With this thirty days, we can actually want to discuss this on on the, the next meeting, Monday. Yeah, something. I would. I would only add uh, that the board should consider. You know, I, Hopkinton. I understand that you know we're a running town. Um, but there's also a parade permit for the following Saturday uh, in that same area with road closures. Um, and that's the Timlin race that's been going on for several years now. Um, so I think that the board, whether it's this one or future boards, needs to consider, you know, is there, is there some frequency that's acceptable and another frequency for these races that's not when it deals with road closures. Well, and to Mr. Sestari's point, and that's why I wish there was someone here to speak for it, I, I don't know. It's a group from Greater Boston. I'm not quite sure what the Hopkinton connection is. Um, but I did notice on the on the permitting sheet that there was concern expressed where the loop, I guess last year it involved closing the loop road and there were games and things, lacrosse conflicts on some that's of the what, fields. That's what I was going to say. Um, is there's you know, a lot of baseball and lacrosse. Uh, yeah, and, and, and it wasn't really clear that that had been ironed out. And I know there's a lot of demand for stuff in Hopkinton. And again, I, you know, I'm not sure if it's a Hopkinton group or not, but, you know, um, so Mr. You know, Chair, I would say yes yeah. to everything. Well, why don't we just hold this? Yeah, one? I would suggest that we hold off and get them in here because this is yeah. a big Hopkinton thing. There's a lot of Hopkinton kids that participate in my sure. girls. It's a girls thing. So right. it's girls on the run. It's, I think, sixth grade to ninth grade or something along that those lines. And it's a program. It's a it's a program that runs several months, and they have different races. Um, but there'll be lots of Hopkinton kids participating. And I'm sure if we had someone here, they could answer a lot of these questions. Yeah, what's, so what's the, what, Madam Camilo, or Ms. Lazarus, can you contact them to see if they could come to the uh, to a meeting? Let's we'll, we'll put them on the agenda for Monday. I I missed some of the questions. Well, There's lots of questions, so let's not repeat them. I, okay. mean, I think, okay. so, I think we need to have them, uh, one of the adults come in as part of this process. Okay. It's a statewide thing. All the towns participate. It's a really big effort across well, the state. And, and to be clear, um, I'm not saying this is not a good event. All these events are good events. But there's only so many calendar days. There's only so many roads in Hopkinton we get a lot of these requests and you know for instance when the fields are saying there's going to be conflicts with the loop road being closed and games going on um you know you have to coordinate all that and and you know maybe you just don't have maybe they need to move the times around or whatever i just i just feel that this hasn't okay. been smoothly coordinated all right so we'll, we'll we'll put this around for for, for monday okay uh 3b yep. That's not <coughs> So this is one of the um, one of the events I really I, I like to attend every year, uh, whether I'm selectman or not. Um, and when you go to this event each and every year, it's a very moving and very meaningful event. Uh, Mike and his group of, uh, of veterans they do an unbelievable job in everything they do, from the Evergreen Cemetery to up to the march. Uh, unfortunately, last year, Tommy McIntyre zinged me with the broken down fire truck, uh, so I was unable to, to uphold my part of it. But these guys do a great job, <coughs> and uh, I back them a thousand percent in anything that they do. They're, they're, they're uh, just a phenomenal, they do a phenomenal job in everything they do, and they make the veterans proud, and people like me that aren't veterans, that, that never served, uh, makes me admire the work that these guys do even more. <laughs> Best holiday in town. It's awesome. It, it really is. Everybody loves it. It really is. Okay, with that, the chair will entertain a motion to, uh, on behalf of the Veterans Celebration Committee, to uh, uh, support their so um, application. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, committee appointment. Uh, Don McNeil. Mr. Chair, I think when uh, we do an appointment, if the if the uh, applicant is here, it's, it's always a good idea to introduce the applicant to the community. So, if Mr. McDill, what, McNeil wouldn't mind joining us for a minute, um, 
I'm sorry, I didn't know you had the crutches going there. <laughs> Can I ask clarification? Oh, that's right. We were talking about the other day. Yeah. On, on the application, it says Seldon, Seldon Neal, and it Sheldon. says Sheldon McNeil. I yeah, want to be sure I'm clear. No age. <laughs> it's it is Sel Seldon, yes. and it's Neil. It is Neil. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I'm there's two different ones. Yeah, applications. <laughs> you get your name right before we appoint the wrong person. I got, I've got fat thumb things. <laughs> so, Mr. McNeil, if you wouldn't mind, just a quick intro uh, and your interest in serving on this committee, please. Uh, well, I mean, I work with Mike quite a bit. Anyway, with, with the celebration we do the gun salute, I own the nonprofit Old Guide New England, and I just want to give back a little more to my own town. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you very much. I'm all set, Mr. Chair. And this, this term is the, a term that ends in three months. So June 30th, 2018, it says. Okay. No. Or is, no, this is went, actually, I thought it went to 20. It says 2018. Uh, it's supposed to go to yeah. 20, I believe. I think she On said, an earlier rev. I think she said it was filling in for somebody that left and then they did redo it again at the end of June. So when we do the reappointments, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah you'd be right sure there for the next yeah. term too. So. Oh, do you have to come next month to another meeting? No, no, no. <laughs> get enough time to print the signs and put them out. But you're running. Just hop down, hop right over. I recognized you instantly, yeah. Yeah. Mr. Chair. Oh. I, I move that the board vote to approve the appointment of Selden McNeil to the Veterans Celebration Committee for a term to expire June 30th, 2018. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Welcome. Thanks for stepping up. Thank you. Thanks, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, next up. Oh, is this a, a public hearing that, that what I didn't open on time? No. Okay, just making sure. So, oh. Board of Selectmen will consider approving the new Class Two automobile dealers license for John in, in Cardone. Cardone. In Cadoni, on behalf of Main Street Service Center, 96 Main Street, uh, proof of bond has been uh, been provided. Um, it, uh, I think, it went through ZBA already. And I think that we are just um, uh, granting the license today. Mr. Chair, point of order: uh, I have my car serviced by John. Um, uh, I pay him; he doesn't pay me for that work. I don't have any financial interest uh, in his business whatsoever. I don't intend to step out for this discussion unless the board would prefer I do. I'll make the same clarification for myself. And I get I get stickers there too. So. And so do I. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we're all set. Uh, I've never okay. met him. <laughs> so I just, I just want it on the record that I'm not recusing intentionally. Yes, yes. yes, exactly. Good. Okay. It's tough on stickers though. <laughs> All right, uh, do you want to come up? He's supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> how you doing, John? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. So, um, any questions? Mr. Kamala, do you, have, uh, do you want to take us through this one? Yes, through the chair, um, and thank, thank you for coming in. Thank you. Um, this is a business that has been in town for many, many years. And this application has gone through the Zoning Board of Appeals, received approval, uh, and is coming before the board uh, as is required by our town bylaw. In the past, when the board has considered these applications, I think the most recent was uh, at the corner of Cedar and Main Street, uh, the board's position was to support the application. So we had a similar request in town three or four years ago for the gas station at the corner of Grove and Main Street. Uh, Cedar, Cedar and Main Street. Cedar and Main Street. And, um, I always get confused. Um, and there was some concern at that time about you know how that would play out and what it would look like and you know what would the activity be like and everything. And while I see, you know, I think it was one or two, maybe three cars in that application, uh, I think uh, that that has gone extremely well. I haven't seen any issues with it at all. And I think it's a nice little added kind of feature for the town for folks driving around and needing to get a, a, another car. So uh, I know there was concern about it then. I haven't heard anything since, since about that idea or concept. 
and the way John runs his business, I would have no issue at all doing a license with him as well. So there's probably no one on the board that's known Mr. Incadoni longer than I have. Uh, John has been in town for a long time. He managed to stay in business for a long time under a very difficult landlord. Uh, I can say that with no hesitation as he's my, he was my uncle. Um, so, but when you walk into to John's business in Main Street, as soon as you walk in, you look and you see 30 years worth of Little League sponsorships and all these other things that he's done. He's been a, a, a pillar in the community. He's been a great guy. Never hear anybody say anything bad. You never, you've never, I, I personally have never heard any, uh, a bad word said about his business. Um, I support this guy a thousand percent, and, and uh, as long as he, he, as long as everything is up to snuff zoning wise and things like that, is a thousand percent my support on this. So he only needs a hundred. Okay. This is the story. Leave the wit to me. <laughs> I supported this until I heard Mr. Tedstone did. <laughs> no, I'm not sure. <laughs> no, um, I've been I've been bringing my cars to John since I moved to town too. And, uh, great guy, upstanding guy. Uh, like like Mr. Ted Stone said, you can go in, you can see his commitment to the community, uh, whether it's there or going to the fields themselves and and seeing the name on the back of the kids. Um, I don't hesitate to recommend that people go to John. I know that he's not going to do something that's going to become an eyesore in town. Uh, and you can tell that by the way he keeps his property now, mm -hmm. uh, both inside and out. And, um, uh, you know, I love doing business with John, and, and I support him. Thank you. Well, John has rescued me many times. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he's, he's been a wonderful business for the community. And, you know, as, as Brendan said, you go, you go in, not only do you see the Little League, but building is spotless the grounds are perfectly maintained and I don't have any question that he's going to run a first-class operation and will not you know have anything but a, a, a well cared for site um, I just I want to ask John just one question just out of curiosity with the CBA I can't argue with the CBA but um, what is their thinking behind no weekend sales? Because I would have thought that that's often when people who are working have time to go and, and look at a vehicle. But is that standard? Or, I mean, you know, I, I, we can't do anything about it. I'm just yeah, curious. No, they base that on my regular business hours. I'm not, I don't well, open on Saturdays. I thought you were open a half a day. <laughs> no, no. John lives a cushy life on the weekend. We, yeah, yeah, pretty <laughs> much. Yeah. I just didn't want to see a restriction put on here that wasn't, that wasn't necessary. But they, just base, the, they just base the sale of used cars around the, uh, the hours of my operation during the week, which was fine with me. I was good. Fair. Well, so totally support you, John. Thank you. My only question is, you've got a good business. Why do you want to become a used car salesman? No, 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 I'm just joking. <laughs> I didn't want to answer that's all that. I that's all that. That's all that. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, okay. Um, you've got my, uh, my, my. I have a question before I offer this motion. Has that part come in yet that we have on order? Do you know? Yes, it has. <laughs> all right. Thank you. I'm happy to make a motion. Uh, <laughs> oh, thanks. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that the Board of Selectmen approve a Class II automobile dealer's license for John and Cardone, Main Street Service Center, 96 Main Street, Hopkinton, Massachusetts. Second. With no conditions other than those stipulated. Do you accept that friendly amendment? Uh, I do. Okay. And those would be the same. Any, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. Thank you. I would like Good to luck, see. John. I would like to see Wayne Rakowski as your uh, yeah. general manager. <laughs> I'll see you soon. Thanks, John. Thanks for coming in. Okay. We are uh, putting off the um, the joint meeting until our next meeting. So we are now jumping up to the audit or the uh, audit report. Mr. Chair, I'm sorry. We're putting off which? We're putting off number seven to our next meeting uh, when uh, we can have. Uh, and, and when is our next meeting so everybody can be aware of this? It's uh, the next Monday. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, we have to double check to see the so time. And have our colleagues been notified that we're going to be meeting on Monday? 
Uh, not yet, because we just uh, we just got word that we would we were going to add them to our uh, to our other meeting. So I think it's important we get the notification yes. to the planning board members that we're going to be meeting on Monday for the appointment. Thank you. Right. Monday, April thirtieth. Correct. Yes. Is it April thirtieth? Not yes. Monday. Yeah. Not Monday, May sixth. Monday, no. April thirtieth. No. So next Monday we have another meeting. Yes. yes. This Monday. Who's got that ball? Is that Mr. Kamal? To make sure the planning board is notified? Yeah. Elaine will do that. Okay, yeah. thank you. That will have to be posted what, back Thursday? Yes. So that needs to be posted by, yeah. Yeah, and then, and again, then we're adding, we're also adding the uh, the race to that one. And what then, time? Yes. <laughs> no. April 3rd. April 3rd. April 3rd. Monday. Like, Monday, April 30, 2018. Seven. Seven, six, thirty. What time? Seven or seven. What time do we have? The, can we get? We have an executive session that night as well. Yeah, we have an executive session. Six forty-five. Yeah. Just so we can. We'll, we'll, we'll get notice of. We'll get notice of plenty of time. We just have to double check when we can have the studio or the or the other room. Okay. Um, Mr. Kamala, number eight. Yes, um, with the Chair's permission, may, may I invite Terenzio Volpicelli of Roselli Clark and Associates. And also, I want to draw your attention to your emails, if you don't mind putting up your emails. Send a new one? Yes, I just sent an email. You don't have access. It's the Got backstage. It. Backstage. Don't give the uh, password out over there. Thank you. Yeah. Do you have a talk? Here while you're looking, yes. sir, Terenzio? Yes, it is. Is that correct? That's correct. Spelling, yes. pronunciation, thank you. Welcome. Thank you very much. Yeah. And, and in fact, also, I think it needs to be said that uh, we felt it was important to introduce Terenzio to the board and to the community uh, since this is his first year working as an auditor for the town, uh, having replaced a long-term auditor for the town. Secondly, I also thought it was important that we uh, at least bring visibility to uh, the town's finances. Uh, we haven't done this in many years. Um, in fact, what we have done in the past is to simply include the financial statements in the town's annual report. Um, as you know, my, my desire has been um, to at least have the finance director engage the board regularly on financial issues, and I think this is, this is the first step towards that. Uh, I also found um, uh, Mr. Terenzio's uh, um, management letter very enlightening in terms of pointing to some of the things that we need to do to improve our systems, and for that reason, I thought she should come and have a conversation with the board. Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen of the board, uh, Town Manager Kamalo, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Terenzio Volpicelli. I represent the firm of Roselli Clark & Associates, Certified Public Accountants. We are located out of Woburn, Massachusetts. We were engaged to perform a financial statement audit of the town's financial statements for the year ended June 30th, 2017, for which a copy, uh, unfortunately, was just sent to you. I'm, I'm sorry, it must have been a miscommunication. Um, probably should have had that several days ago. Um, <clears throat> but nevertheless, uh, you, you now have a copy of the 2017 audited financial statements. Um, I'm going to bore you for one moment with what we refer to as required communications. I have certain professional standards that require that I uh, 
communicate this information to you. So uh, I will do it as abbreviated as possible. Uh, we, um, we perform our audit in accordance with generally accepted auditing standards of the United States of America, government auditing standards, uniform guidance, as well as um, just our own professional uh, judgment. Uh, we have issued our financial statements. They're dated June. T I'm sorry, January 26, 2018. We've also issued a letter to management, dated that same date, for which there were no significant weaknesses or material weaknesses in the uh, management letter. It's important to note that management is responsible for the selection and use of the accounting uh, policies used by the town. The significant accounting policies are described in Note One to the financial statements. Um, there were no new accounting uh, uh, standards implemented in 2017 that had a material impact to your financial statements. Next year, so this current fiscal year that we're in, we'll have some significant accounting pronouncements that will be uh, impacting the town, most notably OPEB, which I'm sure you've uh, had many discussions about. Uh, this is the year we bring on board the full OPEB um, liability uh, based on your actuarial valuation. Um, so that will have a significant impact on the town's financial statements. Is that, is that a state regulation that we bring that on board? Uh, that's an accounting pronouncement that's being uh, rolled out through the entire country. Through the country? Yeah. For OPEB yeah. in particular? Yeah. yeah, there's really no uh, pronouncements by the state with respect to OPEB. Um, the most significant accounting estimates involved in the town are the OPEB obligation that's currently stated, as well as your net pension liability, both of which are determined actuarially. We encountered no significant difficulties in management and performing our audits. Professional standards require that we accumulate all known and likely misstatements identified during the audit, other than those that are clearly trivial. The final financial statements that you have include all corrections of any material items. We've had no disagreements with management. Management provided us with certain representations uh, in a letter dated January 26, 2018. And uh, the rest of this isn't terribly important. Uh, the great news is the town enjoys a AAA credit rating from S&P, which provides it with a, a lot of flexibility when going out uh, for general obligation bonds. The town has a strong reserve ratio. And uh, as I understand it, you're working towards formalizing an OPEB trust in the coming weeks and months. Um, it has over $50 million in investments in cash at June 30th. Um, 2017, the real story was all the capital projects that were taking place. Uh, you were finalizing your library, finalizing a DPW uh, expansion, and uh, breaking ground on a early elementary education school. Um, to which the town borrowed significant amounts of money. And again, having the AAA rating affords the town uh, some of the best rates in the country. Uh, once again, we've had no uh, significant defici deficiencies or material weaknesses that we noted. And um, throughout the course of this audit, every, every first year audit, we, we, we learn a lot about each other. And um, it was a pleasure working with the team out here. So I know you folks have just seen the audit report. My apologies for that. Um, again, probably first year miscommunication there. Uh, probably should have been sent out several days ago. Um, this is the start of yours, like these questions. You can start at the other end for once. <laughs> so I sit on the Compliance Audit and Risk Committee at Framingham State University as a member of the trustees there as well. And um, while it's a different firm, I'm very familiar with sort of this public entity audit process and uh, if you found no findings that's a good thing so I'm good thank you Mr. Ted Stone. I do not sit on any type of board like that <laughs> but um, I echo Mr. Hur's uh, sentiment that if you're if you're looking and you're not finding it then we're uh, seem to be doing all right I was an auditor in a last life and you know how you can be uh, nitpicky so I'm glad that you didn't find anything I think that's right you know a lot more about this than I do and that's what we're we brought you in for so um, you know I if your report is good then I'm good with it <laughs> I don't have any any questions I can pose at this time 
Um, I'll be honest, I just like the fact that we're actually having somebody come in front of us and give this presentation. Uh, I've been on the board for nine years, and this is the first time we've done this, so I appreciate that. I appreciate this process, Mr. Kamalo. Um, I don't think there's any question um, that, uh, you know, the board um, trusts the integrity and the actions of the people who work for Town Hall, uh, but it's always nice, uh, well, of course, obligatory for us to, uh, you know, get, get uh, uh, some outside counsel on that as well, just to verify. So. And again, I think I've distributed my business card to anybody, so if you have any questions, but, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Yeah, my, my chest just starts getting tight when we start talking about all those projects, though, every year. <laughs> Hang on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> rest easy, homes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, just to, to be clear, though, the town has been doing audits each yeah. year, yeah. forever. Mm -hmm. We just haven't had the presentation and a formal no findings. Thank you for your time tonight. Right. Which I think is, to your point, an excellent idea. And uh, sort of, it's the it's the culmination of all your hard work, but it also lets the town know we're doing it. We've been doing it for a long time, and it's good. And to it's, know we're yeah, and it's not it's not Mr. Kamalo saying. Yeah, they were here and they said everything was good. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Trust me. But once again, folks, there were no significant weaknesses, no material weaknesses involved. Um, sufficient, I'm sorry, significant deficiencies and no material weaknesses. There were a number of items we brought up to management um, that are just normal in the course of, right. of an audit. Understood. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, this is, yeah, as um, Mr. Hur was saying, we do, the, we do do this every single mm -hmm. year, but we don't have... No, 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 I want the, you know the, all the townspeople to understand that that here's our we, we got our grade and we got a, we got a, a passing grade by, by an independent auditor um, and um, it's uh, we're looking great it's the uh, you know and it's, it's a testament to the people that work in town hall that that everybody is doing their job well and that uh, their money is being taken care of the work is being taken care of so really thank you very much for doing a thorough audit and um, and uh, Mr. Kamalo, uh, good job, Ms. Lazarus, good job. Thank you for uh, keeping us all on track at Town Hall. Yeah. Through the chair, perhaps one question for Mr. Terenzio is the introduction of new regulations or accounting regulations for OPEB. Plain and simple, what might this mean for communities? The, the current accounting pronouncement is uh, what's referred to as GASB 45. And GASB 45 started at a certain point in time, 2008. And essentially, the actuaries would say you would have been required to contribute X dollars towards your OPEB, which is essentially other post-employment benefits. So the biggest portion being retiree health care. If your actual out-of-pocket expenses was Y, and that was $500,000 less, you, wrote, you had a $500,000 obligation. The next year, if it was the exact same formula, you would have a million dollar obligation. Starting in fiscal 18, there's a new way of measuring this, and it's to take a look at what the total unfunded liability is in a substantially similar way as we look at pensions today. As a result, and if you bear with me for one moment, there would be a significant impact to your to your bottom line on your full accrual accounting financial statements. And that amount, pardon me, could be approximately $16 million difference to the negative. Um, it doesn't change your financial position on a statutory level and has absolutely nothing to do with the statutory side of things. When we take a look at our financial statements, financial statements uh, under gap for municipalities has a number of components. One component is full accrual. We're bringing everything on the books, our debt, our uh, capital assets, our compensated absences, the amounts we owe for vacation, and, uh, and these long-term liabilities, um, which is significantly different than statutory, which is what you're running your business on. Um, so, so to make, hopefully I've answered your question that on a full accrual basis, it will be approximately a $16 million hit to your um, net position uh, opening the year. 
So and again, that could change depending on the, you know, the final actuarial calculations. Any indication whether that might affect the town's official credit rating? Well, the fact that the town is putting money aside right now is, is very helpful. Um, there isn't a municipality in the state, well, actually, I, I apologize, there's a couple very small ones who are significantly funded simply due to size. They had a cash windfall and they decided to put in a million dollars into a fund, mm -hmm. and that's 85% of their obligation because they're small communities. Most larger communities or communities of this size are really just starting this process. Uh, one would expect that at some point in time, when, when your pension system has become fully funded, that perhaps this board makes a decision that the windfall that we have from that might roll into this plan. And um, credit rating agencies like S&P are going to want to know what is your funding policy? Where does the board stand on how they're going to um, attack attack this matter? And um, again, I, I understand that you folks are going to be taking the first steps um, to this towards actually forming a, an OPEP trust. And through June 30th to 17, you put aside $1.5 million, which is a sizable amount of money for a community of this size. So I think that getting to your question, credit rating agencies are going to look favorably to you because you are taking these steps. There are, there are large communities that just don't have the resources and they're not doing anything about it. Uh, but you folks are certainly demonstrating that you are taking those steps. Yeah, we have a couple of members of the board that years ago decided to take that on and did a good job with that. No, Benjamin told us we were going to do it. Yeah, no. <laughs> That's true. I wasn't going to go there, but yes, Ben really did uh, work hard at that. First, he did a great job. Yep. Yep, he did. Thank you, Ben. Okay. That's great. Thank you very, very much. I really do appreciate it. No, thank, thank you for your time. For thank you for coming. Thanks. Thank you. See you next year. Sounds fine. <laughs> Next up, Board of Registrar Voters Appointment. Board of Selectmen will consider accepting the following nominations by the Democratic and Republican uh, nominating parties for the Board of Registrar Voters. Number one, Brian Karp, Republican, 23 Nicholas Road, and Richard Duggan, uh, Democrat, uh, 33, 38 Priscilla Road in Hopkinton. Mr. Town Clerk, if you'd be so kind. Good evening, everyone. So this is for a position that was uh, currently in, occupied by Christine Dietz, Democrat on Alexander Road. Uh, she has expressed that she does not wish to be reappointed to the position. And so both parties were given notice to submit candidates to be nominated and put before the Board of Selectmen. This is a seat that can go either way for the party balance on this board. So um, right now, either the Republican or Democratic candidate could be selected, and the Board of Registrars would still be balanced. It's one job, one position. It's, yeah, there's currently only one opening on it. Uh, we have it uh, staggered so that every February it will open up. Uh, so this position became available February 1st of 2018 and then it was advertised it took a little while a little bit of prodding to get the uh, the nominees available but uh, we then got a few people put in it was just these two candidates who expressed interest and they were nominated by their by the political town committees here what's the makeup now yeah the current makeup is myself uh, Janine Wheeler Ristiano, who's Democrat, and Veda Kerr, who's a Republican. And so is, it, is it required that the town clerk be a member? Or yes, not? the town clerk is an ex officio member of the board. It's a four member board. Uh, no party can exceed two members. So, what do you represent? I am unenrolled. You're unenrolled, so. <laughs> This is deja vu all over. I know, right? I, I knew <laughs> you were going to have flashbacks word. on this I'm one. I'm going to get yelled at don't no matter what word. happens here. <laughs> don't worry, Brian. I don't, I don't get offended easy. That was a big dust up. <laughs> Whatever. 
easily it's an advert so uh, thank I'm, you I, i'm with mrs Wright here just trying to figure this out so we have mr deegan unenrolled we have who else Wheeler. we have veda kerr is a republican veda is a republican yeah we have janine wheeler Estino as a democrat and we have the outgoing christine Dietz as a democrat so ms Dietz was a democrat okay or uh, is a democrat okay and the reason we're all having this conversation just to be clear is by law not because we're talking about it by law the town clerk has come to us and said we must consider affiliation as we sort this out because we're trying to keep the board balanced. Is that, that is correct? correct okay just so we're all and clear the, <clears throat> and the duties of this board are so some of the duties include uh, the certification of signatures which most of the time the members will designate to me when it comes to petitions nomination papers as their staff liaison they'll designate me to do so certify signatures and then they'll either sign or authorize me to use a facsimile stamp for their approval uh, they usually ask that i inform them on all the papers that are coming before them that will possibly require their signature they also are responsible for overseeing any recount procedures that occur uh, whenever there's any kind of quasi-judicial situation for the town elections to consider, they're the board that will then oversee that. If anything cannot be decided by them, that, then it goes to courts. Now, I understand that tonight we're dealing with these, these two individuals uh, and choosing between them, but when everything was open and you were getting names, uh, is an unenrolled person an, op an option for this? So unfortunately, based on the Massachusetts general laws, no. Um, the only way in a town that has partisan town elections for someone to be nominated for this position is either, no, it's actually not through me. Uh, uh, no, I meant you being, because you're town clerk. Yeah, and you're as, unenrolled. yeah I'm, I'm a, the only elected member of the board, technically. Yeah. Um, but it's the same in uh, towns with appointed clerks that they serve as the ex officio member. Uh, the other members have to be nominated by a political town committee that is active in that town, and they have to be nominated by the committee uh, to be then to then go before the board of selectmen for that decision. So it's actually impossible for someone who's unenrolled to be placed on the committee unless they are elected as town clerk so I mean I don't question that any of these people do their jobs impartially and adequately and I don't think it's probably a particularly partisan position um, but it does appear that by the town clerk having to hold one of the seats and you being unenrolled that means that there is a structural imbalance uh, built in to the remaining three. You're either going to have two R's and a D or two D's and an R. I mean, that's but, but neither party has a majority. No, the part, what, right, so. right. Um, so that, you know, it, it is what it is. If you, if you were affiliated with a party, that would, that would change the, you know, change the, the uh, topography. Um, it, my, my own feeling, regardless, aside from my party affiliation, is that being what it is, we have had a situation of two D's and an R, so in all fairness, I would advocate, you know, next time around to, uh, you know, allow that to be the two R's and the D um, for, some, for some overall balance. That would be my suggestion. So, I know both candidates uh, very well, and both are good people, and both have the best interest of Hopkinton in mind, I think, at all times, and all the different things they do on behalf of Hopkinton, uh, which is the job. Uh, so I wouldn't have a problem with either one uh, serving. I don't have a strong uh, opinion about the affiliation thing, uh, notwithstanding our last debate about this a, a year or so ago. It was kind of fun, but um, I think that uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter. And, I'd certainly go along with the will of the board. So, Deegan, has <coughs> either one of these candidates shown uh, more enthusiasm than the other? Um, not that I am aware of. I, I've, I know both personally as well, and I think both, either one would be wonderful additions to the board. Uh, so I have no issue with any way that the board decides to take this. I think both are gentlemen of good character, and that we would be 
well served to have them on the board of registrars. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, throw out a nomination for Brian Carp. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? If, if somebody else wants to throw it, you know, I'm not trying to race to the punch. If somebody else wants to throw something else, I'm just trying to keep this going. Um, I I know Brian well. Um, I I've had a couple of conversations with Dick Dugan, but you know, I don't I don't know him well. And, you know, that's the only reason I'm throwing Brian's name out. I know Dick Dugan though. I hear his name thrown around, and I think that uh, you know he's one of those people in town that always has the good of Hopkinton, uh, you know, top of mind. So I'm not trying to make any statement on that, but I'm just trying to keep this going. And uh, everybody seems to and, be and pretty I, neutral. And, I, and, I, and I, I sort of agree with uh, what Ms. Wright said. We had two Ds and an R. Why not two R's and a D for, for the next okay. next session? So I was going to buck conventional wisdom and do something a little bit different with Mr. Dugan, but if that's the will of the board, then I'm fine with that. If your motion is... So with that, all those in favor of um, uh, appointing Brian Carp of 23 Nicholas Road for the um, Board of Registrar of Voters, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Tom Clark. Thanks, Tom. I'm going to stay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Would you just, would you <laughs> come and stay right there? I know. <laughs> Mr. Kamalo, could you yeah. start us up on this <coughs> one for you between the two of you? Is Tom? I, I haven't heard from him. I thought he was going to be here, but uh, so I can. Uh, so I'm I'll, sure I'll introduce yeah. it. The Board of Select will receive an update from the town clerk, town moderator, town manager for information and technology director regarding the introduction of electronic voting in the upcoming annual town meeting on a trial basis. Electronic voting will allow secure voting by town meeting attendees <laughs> using tablets and smartphones, full audit trail, instant tallying, and display of results. So I'm sure that you recall that uh, a few months ago, Tom came up and he expressed an interest to start doing electronic voting to try and increase efficiency at town meeting. Uh, when he was originally doing his research, he was looking at some of the organizations that had uh, the clickers that you'd get and renting all the equipment along with having their staff available was going to be costing us between $10,000 and $15,000 per event. Um, I ended up finding this organization that we decided to allow to do a demo. We brought them in and they use uh, an application that you can download onto either a smartphone or you can use tablets that they will be providing for us. Um, this will allow for secure voting. We'll be able to ensure that everyone who is voting using these can only vote from within what is the bounds of the hall uh, using certain Bluetooth technology that they have available to have geonetting. And we also uh, will be able to, if people don't have these smartphones, they uh, will bring us 30 tablets that people can use in order to allow for uh, people to vote without if they don't have the technology available to them. And our volunteers would be able to assist if someone is unsure of how it works. So part of the process change would just be that when you're coming in to check in to vote, you would be, instead of given the, the colored slip of paper that you'd hold up, you're given a card, about business card size, with a QR code on it that is anonymous and unique. You sign in to the event on your device, or you can do it at the tablets during the votes. And at that point, if you're using your own personal device, you're asked to either enter a PIN before you vote or use the biometrics that you already have on your phone during that voting process. So for instance, for mine, for either sign in to the application or to confirm a vote, I would need to use my phone's thumbprint scanner that it's not taking the information or keeping the information, it's just using whatever information your phone already uses to lock. If you don't have that on your phone, then it will just have you make a pin at the time of your sign up. It's anonymous to the point where you only have as much information on it as you choose to put on it, but it does still allow us using the QR codes to keep track of quorum and have an accurate count of votes during the meeting. So if I may, Connor, 
how did this how do you prevent someone deciding they're going to leave the meeting <coughs> but I'm going to say to my friend next to me when this vote comes up will you vote for me so with that um, if it's the situation where it's on the other per on the person's phone yeah but so let's they could give them their phone <coughs> or they could give them the tablet so and they could leave so whenever the whenever a single vote comes up so let's say we're all going to be using this to vote on budget right. we have the motion we're closed discussion we're voting if someone said you know take my phone when the vote comes up just go ahead and vote yes for me right. then so what would happen is right as we make the vote available on the app because we're have we're doing this in real time with IT so we make the vote available for people to go ahead and place cast their ballot so to speak then it will ask for that pin or that biometric scan and that could be facial recognition depending on your phone it could be your thumbprint access but it will ask for that before you can confirm a vote if you can't do uh, give that recognition and that security then it will not allow you to do so unless you're willing to go up and cast your vote on in front of the volunteers who may be able to recognize you know granted there's still that level of security where someone could technically breach it but it's a little bit more difficult than give people colored slips of paper and someone walk out and hand it off to someone else. So we ran into a problem tonight trying to look at this email where not everybody on this board had a smartphone to access that email from that auditor. He said there's going to be 30 tablets available. What if there's 275 people that don't have smartphones? So we can have more as needed, but the plan that I had kind of roughly come up with for how we were going to handle this was how we usually have everything separated into sections for the meeting. If we have a few of the people that are volunteers or employees going up to go and at the end of each of those sections, anyone who can, who doesn't have a device that they can use, can come up and in the front of their section do their scan of their QR code, cast their ballot, go back and sit. If there's anyone who's going to be unavailable to stand up, whether it be because of a handicap or uh, any other reason, then someone can bring them the tablet and they can cast their vote on there. So uh, that was a concern that I had initially, and I brought that one up when we were doing the demo, as I was worried about how are we going to ensure that we're not disenfranchising voters with this. And I, I felt like my concerns were alleviated when I kind of was able to discuss that we could have, uh, they've seen it before where people will just end up downloading the app when they see that, you know, maybe it's a little bit easier than walking up every time, but some people want to go ahead and use that tablet anyway. So my concern is that, um, and it used to be said, and I believe now we're ready for a vote. That some people say, wait a minute, wait a minute, I can't log in, I can't log in, hold it, hold it. Oh, it's just like, and then we're, we're trying to vote, but then somebody is still saying, oh, wait a minute, I'm still having trouble. It's not recognizing my thumb. It's not, wait a minute, the code's not working. My Bluetooth isn't on. And then we might have to do a, oh, wait a minute, we're going we're gonna to redo this vote. So if, That's, if someone that. does have an issue during that with any kind of technical issues, um, they are going to actually have staff on site that will be able to assist if there are issues with the actual app and there are fail safes to allow that if someone is having an issue that we can have them use the tablets. So when you say the tablets, are the individuals going to be issued those 30 tablets and they have them with them for the entirety of the meeting or are you saying there's a tablet that's going to be moving around? These are going to be shared communal tablets. So if you're not using a smartphone and you're using a tablet, every time there's a vote, you have to either go to the tablet location or have the tablet come to you. Is that correct? My, again, my understanding from our discussions with the, the, the company that offers this program mm -hmm. is that, as Kona said, number one, the town has the ability to request more than 30 tablets. So we, we can. And then my understanding too was that uh, when when people sign up for the tablets for for the evening, that's the, they, will, they, will, they, will, they will have that tablet for the duration of the meeting. 
it, it wasn't that we will be distributing yes we will be distributing tablets per the vote I, my understanding so, is that, I'm hearing two yeah. different things yeah. so from what I understood during the discussion was we can be given a number of tablets um, anywhere from 15 to 115 I think they said yeah. and the idea would not be to distribute all of these tablets to an individual for the entire meeting because there would be different requirements and no biometric scanning on any of these tablets that would be communal. So that would pose a higher risk if we were to distribute these tablets uh, without any kind of human uh, effect in there. If, if there are volunteers that are handling tablets, whether they be people who would otherwise have been counters uh, that are now just ensuring that everyone gets their chance to vote. And one of the things is every time you scan that QR code to actually cast a vote on those communal tablets, if you already voted with that code, it will not allow you to cast additional votes. Right. Mm -hmm. So if someone comes up and then decides they're going to try to get back in line and use the card again, it's not going to let them vote again. It's going to say that this vote voter has already cast a ballot it will then if the voting is still open it'll allow them to change that ballot potentially and change their vote but that's that's about it uh, we would not be having it so that every person in town meeting would be given their own tablet for it so the citizens of the 10 that are going to need to use the tablet procedures are going to have to either every time ask a volunteer to bring them the equipment or go over to the station and vote. They will not have one on their lap for the duration of the meeting. That is correct. So is it the intention to try and experiment with that, this concept this year? So the idea that we had come up with when we were meeting with them was to see if we could run a pilot program of it for this town meeting on a few articles not for the whole meeting but just on a few to make sure that we could kind of see how it works and see how voters felt about it so right. so i would suggest i'm sorry i would suggest that we make a presentation to town meeting that this is what we'd like to do at the next town meeting and give people advance notice and a year to think about it before we walk in on monday may 5th or whatever it is and say okay for the first three votes here that's how we're going to do this I mean, that's going to take two hours because I can see the people at the microphone now that are not going to like this idea and are going to push back very, very hard. Uh, so I think if we introduce it this year, make a presentation this year. And, and have say, a couple, 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 couple uh, public forums. Or and yeah, and we talk about it and then next year we implement it and run the first three lighter duty articles or whatever it might be. I just, I think we have to ease people into this. Um, I think it would be very difficult for some of our regular town meeting members uh, to embrace this for lots of different reasons. And um, it's only going to slow the process down in what's going to be a pretty active town meeting like they all are. So unfortunately, Tom's not here to take any comments. It's ultimately his decision on whether or not we do roll this out for this town meeting or if we hold off for a future Fair town enough. meeting for this one. Fair enough. Um, yeah. I'm just presenting what we've had from our demos and uh, I will also say that the company has offered to come and do uh, some public forum sessions in the time leading up to town meeting just for this if it's we wanted to do it for even just four articles um, and just try it out because they want to help and make sure that if we try this that we'll actually like it and want to keep using it. Uh, so they've offered to assist with a lot of the outreach and come in for demos for the public as well. But again, if you want to talk with Tom about, you know, potentially pushing this off, then that's uh, that's going to be his decision of how he wants to have those votes. Have, there's a meeting tomorrow morning. So. <laughs> um, I have a big smile on my face. I and and I'm thinking about this concept <coughs> ten years ago and having Joe Pratt embrace the tablet technology at town meeting and it brings a huge smile to my face thinking of what that would be what, what that would have been like um, but I don't uh, 
based on this flyer and the information, that I, I have a lot of questions um, that probably with Tom the, not being the here. The flyer says they use blockchain, so it's got to be good. It's got to be good. Uh, <laughs> you I, know, I, I question cost, especially in, in our financial state right now. I question if this is going to cost us anything. Um, when I sit on that elementary school building committee and we're arguing Crayola crayons mm -hmm. versus off-brand, um, I, I, I question if this is the time, you know, with, uh, with budget as tight as it is, and we're looking at every nickel and dime. Uh, I can, so this is, this is something that um, when I was chair a few years ago, I started talking with Dr. Carlin about, and I love technology. I love using technology pretty much any chance I can. Um, you know, Dr. Carlin wasn't really for something like this at the time. And I'll be honest, you know, as I look at it, you know, I can, I can say that I was for it before I was against it. <laughs> you know, um, I, I do like technology. I like the opportunity of streamlining this. I, I can think of a few votes over the last several years where it's been incredibly close and we've had recounts and things like that. And this would, this would, you know, alleviate those pains. You know, I mean, the days of the recount would be all but gone. Um, but I also like, you know, having people stand up and, you know, stand for what they believe. Yep. You know, stand up, you know, show your neighbor what you think. Um, I, can, I can give arguments on the other side, too, and say, well, this is going to allow people to vote their hearts a little bit more easily so that they're not being intimidated by their neighbor as well. <laughs> so, which is also a good thing. Why thing. are you looking so, at me? So, <laughs> so I, can, I, can, I can argue both sides of this. Um, I do think that this is something that, while I understand it's, it's uh, the will, it, it would be the will of the moderator in how he chooses to implement. I think it would be a, a little more judicious for us to go in slowly and start explaining it to town meeting first. Um, and I think that you know it might even you know make sense to try to get uh, the opinion of town meeting before we implement something like this. Although we know how long that's going to take as well. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I just think I think this is something where we need to go in slowly. And we also need to know exactly how, what kind of procedures we're going to use, right? Because there are going to be some things where all of a sudden people are going to get frustrated. They're going to say, I'm not sure if my vote went in, or I know it didn't go in, or I never got to the tablet because this person was in the way, you know, blah, 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 blah. And all of a sudden, you know, all hell's going to break loose, and people are going to ask for a manual count, and we have to know how we're going to do a manual count, manual count. Or... If there are amendments thrown onto a motion to make sure that you know this doesn't have everything kind of pre-programmed and allows you to put in amendments and vote on, on an amendment before you vote on the article itself, and it's all that stuff we need to make sure that we have ironed out before. And I know that no one was talking about a full rollout right now, but you know before we start talking about rolling it all out. Um, so, if, if I may, I I'm sure Norman can speak to this as well. Um, we actually were asking a lot of these questions sure. during the demo. I know Norman had a few very good practical questions about uh, when it came to implementation of this for when it came to recounts, procedures, and, uh, and potentially even being able to use this to eliminate having to do hand counts, therefore decreasing the time of town meeting dramatically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's pretty mm -hmm. appealing, right, <laughs> by itself. Well, and I know you've put, you know, a bit of time into this, um, Connor. Um, there is a group, a uh, five-town board of selectmen group that meets regularly with the surrounding communities and discusses all kinds of issues. And uh, this came up at the last meeting, and in fact, there were two other communities that snuck in. So there are actually seven communities all discussing this. Um, all looking at different types of electronic voting. There were the obvious concerns about cost. Um, they were talking about some kind of a system that involved what they called a clicker that was issued to people. And everyone had one at your seat. And if you left the meeting, there was a 
check out at the door and you had to surrender your clicker so that they knew no one was voting you know their neighbor wasn't voting and they didn't leave it there so there was that sort of control um, and along the discussion of cost because all communities are looking at we talked about you know the possibility of linking up with surrounding communities and whatever equipment was involved um, coordinating so that you know if your town meetings were not all this and the town meetings tend to be all over the map on calendars um, it could move around from community com to community and be shared within these five or seven communities and a number of people thought you know that would be a really good solution to you know do something uh, more progressive but cut the cost down and uh, you know an all for one kind of a system where you didn't have oh some people have the tablet or they don't know how to use the you know whatever um, but you know I thought that was something worth looking into where you cut the cost down by sharing with communities um, but I know you know this is what you put your time into but I did want to throw that out as I think an option. That, I, think that, I think that that's a, a nice idea but I don't know that the and Connor, you can probably I'll weigh say, in when you're done. I was going to say, I don't know that the hardware costs are, <coughs> A, that great where we need five communities kind of sharing and taking the risk of this community breaking 10 of them and, you know, who's going to pay for those. The other thing is the licensure of the software itself more than likely, I would think, goes by community so that when you're getting on to the Hopkinton annual town meeting, it's going to be branded and all of that, and it's going to be based on... You know how many people are signing in and, and things of that nature um, so that you know the hardware itself is going to be a relatively minor cost in the whole thing I would think so so actually I apologize for interrupting Gordon. Right. it's okay um, so we I actually did look into clickers I, I looked into that uh, technology before I had seen it used at a few conferences and um, had experimented with it a little bit in that way but one of the issues that I noticed it actually was a significantly larger cost than this program. Um, I, I like to say that I, I'm pretty fiscally minded when it comes to a lot of this stuff. I was looking at the clickers and even if we, as Todd said, um, if we did share it with multiple communities, we would see that their contracts they charge are typically per event. So we'd still end up be paying our own share, or if one community, if we were all sharing, like, equally splitting the check on it, so to speak, mm -hmm. then if one community has guaranteed multiple town meetings a year, we end up paying more to mm -hmm. have that occur. Mm -hmm. um, with, with this program, part of the thing that keeps that cost, the cost lower for this one is that we would actually be, we wouldn't be paying for this hardware system. Uh, we wouldn't be renting enough hardware for every registered voter who might pop up to the meeting. Mm -hmm. And we also wouldn't be running the increased number of election workers that would be required to ensure that people surrendered their clickers at the end of the meeting. Uh, that's part of the expense that goes with making sure everyone has their own individualized device that either is rented by or is belong or belongs to the town that we then are responsible for recovering those devices and if people slip out the back way or something or uh, they break it during the meeting then we incur those costs as well uh, so besides eliminating the fact that we we don't can't really have that many more election workers watching every door in and out of the hall it would drive up the cost to do so. Uh, so I know when we were talking with Tom originally and he had done some research on the cost for doing clickers, the range was roughly between $10,000 and $15,000 to do it per event. Um, the range for this uh, in, the, in the estimates that we'd obviously be able to negotiate if we were going to be considering them seriously was between three and five thousand, and as an annual fee for as many events as we had. That's pretty good. Anything else? Connor, uh, thanks for doing all that. Yeah. All the work on that. Yeah. And if I, anyone I think has, I think any... it's something that we need to consider at some point. You know, mm -hmm. 
when I when I kind of put points against it, it's you know. I understand your more, caution. I was very skeptical at first with this one. More using yeah. the heart instead of. <laughs> I'd yeah, love to see a way to find it, technology yeah. that can allow people to participate in town meeting that can't otherwise get there. So if they're watching uh, the local cable access TV. So that would be illegal. Exactly. Right, so illegal. That's what, yeah. Okay, well, let's work on that because there's, there's lots of people that would love to participate that can't get there. So maybe we have to change state law or something. But technology can bring more people into the election process or the local governing process. But as, I think you're going to get – that's, I think, spreading democracy further than taking the 300 people that show up at town meeting and changing how they stand up and sit down for a vote. Um, I'd love to see, you know, folks that can't get there somehow find a way to make that happen. But I get it's beyond Hopkinton. Well, but technology's got to be available where people register with their Social Security number uh, and a URL or, or whatever for their computer ID, and then they're going to be the ones that can vote from home because they can't get to a meeting. This this company, um, you know, I've spoken with a couple people who have seen them present at TechStars and all that, you know, some of these things that are down across the bottom. and. This company is working on that as well, and you know I think that the, the country is going to get there, right? And um, but I don't think we're ready for it yet, right? <laughs> but I think that's a better use of our focus and energy over the next five years than town meet. I don't see the efficiency of town meeting changing a whole heck of a lot of this process. I really don't. Yeah. In in fact, two quick points. Um, to Mr. Sestari's point, yes, this company is actually already delivering uh, remote voting for military personnel. I think they shared that they, with us. Yeah, they have state contracts with a few different states uh, for overseas military voters. Exactly. I, I think the, what, what Mr. Cohen is referring to is the fact that in Massachusetts, remote participation in town meetings is, is not lawful. Okay. Yeah. But that there doesn't mean we can't make it lawful. There's a way to do that. Special act. <laughs> could, no, get with your legislator and get the state to do it. I mean, let's yeah. bring the state along here as well. Yeah. Um, there was also a comment regarding seeking public input mm -hmm. on the concept. I think what I also heard during the presentation is that this tool allows and, in fact, can facilitate before our town meeting on May 7th, seeking input from the public in terms of what they feel about the People, people so, do have the option to opt in to both alerts so that we could inform people of when a town meeting is upcoming. And also, as Norman said, we can uh, allow for opinion polls of exactly. people who are stating that they are registered, that they're in Hopkinton, and they can let us know things as simple as, do they plan on coming to town meeting this year? Okay, thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. That's the way of the future. I'm just not sure we're ready for it. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, and along along those lines, it might not be a bad thing to talk to them and, you know, figure out is there something we should do to prepare for the future by assigning, you know, whatever, some randomly generated voter ID, you know, for people when they register to vote. Everyone actually already has one. Okay, so there you go. So, you know, and then that's, you know, that's your QR code, you know, when, uh, when you're going to log into doing these polls and things like that. And so that actually is an option as well. Um, if we can actually make it so that instead of having, I mean, it's probably slightly more expensive to do so, but instead of having an individual QR codes for, that are just randomly generated that are unique, you can also have them that are assigned to specific voters. Those are typically, uh, from talking with them, more used when they're doing city council meetings and representative town meeting. Um, open town meeting, you tend to not have every uh, eligible voter show up. Um, we have over 11,000 eligible voters for town meeting. We're more likely going to have a few hundred in the room at a time, yeah. which makes the uh, just the randomized anonymous codes a little bit easier for that. And we also don't necessarily need to do a roll call vote that way it can be by secret ballot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I could talk okay. about the block. We could go on this and go on for hours about, about this because it's a fascinating yeah. topic. And, and, and you've done a lot of work here. But think about the anxiety that technology brings to some people, and think about the absolute zero technology it brings to our children. 
yeah. and teenagers and no, college students and 30 year olds yeah. and 40 year olds. No, I definitely see but there's an, it's serious yeah. anxiety with people when you say log in and they don't want to do it or they don't know how to do it or they get they feel like they're in comp whatever. So yet just yesterday, you know, we were coming we were coming home and we were outside the country, we were coming through customs and now they have this new app so that when you're coming through customs you can do it all through an app instead of getting in one of those long lines they have a shorter line where if you have the app you know you fill this out and that out saying you have nothing to declare and you go in and you scan it and you're all done and so you know we're getting off the plane of course i've had my my phone in no cellular data mode you know because i don't want it to get billed for downloading whatever comes in my email and now i'm sitting here with you know the guy from customs and I'm filling this thing out, filling it out, submitting it, and it's not going through. It must have gone through that four or five times. And I'm like, I don't know why this thing can't connect to the server. I, you know, I did, I turned my cell phone back on. It's not airplane mode, all this. And finally, you know, and so I'm, I feel like I know my way around technology. And then all of a sudden my daughter looks over and she's dead. Do you still have cellular data turned off? <laughs> and I'm like, no, that's a good point. <laughs> and it went through. But, but the but anxiety that comes But it's those it. simple things like that, exactly, where, you know, even somebody who's comfortable around technology, something can happen and it creates that anxiety. And now you're trying to, you know, give your voice uh, to a town vote. And you're worried that, you know, whatever it is, you know, whether we're going to build a new school or not, you know, you can't get your vote in on time. You know, it starts. It so, starts so what we need is we need to we need to bring in the the same Girl Scouts and the Boy Scouts yeah. to, 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 to help out. Yeah. The twelve and fifteen year olds to come in and help out everybody. Thirty years from now, this won't be discussed at a board of selectmen meeting. It will be happening. And we'll be yeah. doing the same thing too. We'll be yeah. pushing some buttons on there. Or we'll be looking you, at something. Oh, you, be, you push buttons. We'll be looking at something. Yeah, we push buttons on So, so either you way, um, be a select. <laughs> feel free still to. Be a select. I mean, you know how to get in touch with me, all of you. So, if you have any questions as well, don't hesitate to ask me. Tom can also answer all your questions, and I'm sure when it comes to a lot of the tech of it, Josh is pretty knowledgeable on this now as well. Um, so we're all willing to, you know, talk with you about it too. Whether this is piloted this year or piloted next year or sometime in the far future uh, you know it's it's a conversation worth having and I'm more than happy to answer any questions discuss any concerns and also bring those to the company as well so we can kind of discuss those let him go no we have to get no. back on okay. to I just want to ask where do we stand now is this just a nice discussion? Was Connor coming to report that he's doing this? I heard a variety of things like we shouldn't do this or not. Where, where do we go from here? The Is the moderator yes. will make a decision? Yeah. Yes. All right. So we, we'll tell Tom about what was discussed this evening and see what he thinks. Mm. Okay. okay. It is in, the moderator's in, meeting. Yes. It is, that's true. And in fact, we have the moderator's meeting scheduled for tomorrow morning. It is. So we will communicate the yes. clock tomorrow morning. What's comments to tell we would discuss any of yeah. the other things that we thought, like the random articles? Yeah, whatever. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of things that he wants to discuss. Yeah. Anyway, thank you very much for thank you. hearing Carter, really, me out. Thanks, I appreciate thanks, it. Yeah, thanks, thanks for working overtime for us. We do appreciate yeah. it. Thank you, Connor. Thank you, Connor. Very welcome. Okay, Mr. Yeah. Kamala, yeah. the uh, house with any questions. Board of yeah. Selectmen will receive an update yeah. from the town manager on the Appropriations Committee's review of the proposed 2019 operating capital budget. Mm -hmm. Mr. Kamala, take us through the budget. Yes, 245. Um, I'm, I'm sharing with you the latest draft of the town meeting motions. Yes. Oh, you already have them? That's fine. Yeah, it sounds like you already have them. I don't. In front of yours? You do. Oh, we have them in Yes. Yeah. On paper. On paper. So, you want a second copy? A second. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I am pleased to report to the board that the Appropriations Committee has completed its review of the comprehensive budget. Uh, our last two meetings focused specifically on wrapping up um, the discussion on the CPC articles uh, and also uh, formulating the Appropriations Committee report to be presented to town meeting. Uh, I can share with you that the effort put in by the committee uh, is, is exceptional uh, and they are looking at ways of improving uh, what I think was very well received uh, by town meeting last year. Specifically, two changes that you need to be aware of. Um, 
Number one, I'm going to draw your attention to the budget motion is Article 8 on page, page 6. There are a couple items that I just need to draw your attention to that may not have been part of the motions uh, from previous years. Uh, starting on page six, walk up the way all to page seven. Under general fund, and this is identifying this call. Yes, this section is identifying funding sources for the budget. Again on page seven, under the heading general fund. Ambulance receipts reserved. You would recall that part of the discussion uh, was how we are proposing to use funds that are currently in the revolving fund that will be transferred to the ambulance rece receipts reserved to fund two firefighter positions. Uh, we are specifically calling this out uh, in the motion. And then secondly, bond premiums. This is one, two, third, third row. Uh, in the same section, we're also identifying the use of bond premiums to um, fund part of the budget. So those two changes uh, I felt I needed to highlight because they were not specifically uh, itemized in the budget that was forwarded to the Appropriations Committee. Specifically with regard to the ambulance receipts reserved, you will see an increase in the fire department's uh, personnel services um, of amounting to 500, in, no, in the total fire department budget amounting to 515,080. Okay, and then I want to draw your attention also to the Ascotef field article, which is article 22 on page. 20. Yeah on page 20. The motion, the motion, this is, the motion is actually on page 21. The motion identifies the total appropriation as 3,525,418. And that is broken down into three components. The first component is $1 million from the Community Preservation Fund. And this $1 million has two sub-components. 300000 will come from the Passive Active Recreation, and then 700000 from the Undesignated Fund Balance. We also have a qualifier that these funds shall not be used for the acquisition of the TEF field. The next component, 720. Now, now, now it, can you explain to me um, how some of this stuff works with the, the CPC stuff? Because uh, uh, isn't some of this borrowed against? Yeah, yeah we're, we're coming to that. Oh, okay, we're coming to you. that. Yes. Um, 720,000 is coming from the Community Preservation Fund to be used only for the lighting associated with the Athletic Fields Project. And this will be borrowed. And that the servicing of the bonds and notes shall be made in the first instance from the Community Preservation Committee Reserve Funds. What's that mean? What that means is on an annual basis, CPC apportions the, um, C the CPC income into different buckets. And one of the, those buckets is the general reserve. And that general reserve um, is whatever goes in after the three 10%, 10% of allocations have been made. So the idea is in future funds that will be going to that bucket will be used to service the bonds. So, so in other words, it's not going to be coming out of the recreation, active or passive recreation bucket. 
It's that just is. coming out of the general bucket. So and there's still going to be more money going into CPC annually that can be used for historic. active and passive recreation. And historic. Co but other active and passive recreation. Correct. Um, though I should mention. In, in so so mm. can, I, can I just ask? Yeah. In, in A, the $1 million, there's 300000 that's coming from passive and active recreation. Yes. 700000 that's coming from the general bucket. Does that, no. does that kind of signify that, that $300,000 is pretty much all that's left in active and passive recreation? And now we're going to use seven hundred thousand dollars from the general bucket. Plus, we're going to borrow another seven hundred and twenty thousand dollars from the future general bucket. That's that's a good question. Um, I want to draw your attention to Article. What is the CPC article? Yeah, on page twenty-four. On page twenty-four. We realize that in the, yes, page 24, article 25, we realize that in the past two years, um, CPC did identify active and passive recreation bucket as a funding source for some of the projects that were approved at town meeting. Unfortunately, in the past two years, the town did not add funding to that bucket. So what we're doing now is identifying funds from the budgeted reserves that will be moved to this bucket. And in this year, we're proposing to move 484,700 for that purpose, for the purpose that you asked. So are you saying that in the last couple of years, we've spent money out of a bucket that didn't have money? Yes. <laughs> No, 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 and that reserve can be applied to the buckets, any of the buckets as they see fit. So it's not entirely accurate that they were spending money from a bucket that they didn't have. They had the mechanism to move funds from the budgeted reserve to that bucket. And then in addition, here's what we're suggesting. They also have quote and unquote retained earnings, and that money is available to fund projects. And the re can you define the retained earnings? Uh, that's the undesignated fund balance. Okay. Uh, yes. And currently it's over perhaps 1.2, 1.3 million. Okay. Yeah. And can we just be prepared at town meeting? It's probably CPC's job to do this, but can we be prepared with the information of what the matching funds have been, say, over the last five years uh, so that and what, what's expected in the future. Because what I'm hearing is that uh, this year there are two or three significantly sized communities that are joining, uh, have approved the CPA. And the, what's anticipated is that the matching from the state is going to drop significantly. Um, so if, if we have numbers kind of showing the history of what the matching's been, mm -hmm. And then just any other relevant information, you know, about, and we know these communities are joining. We don't, you know, I'm not trying to project what exactly the effect is going to be, but I think that people should know that. We when, know when, only because we're planning on taking loans out yes. that, that this thing is going to be paying back. Yeah. We, we have already received information from DOR mm -hmm. that the the match in FY19 is going to be 11%. 11%? Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. And, I mean, that's coming from what in the past, you know, I mean, it used to be 100%, okay. right? I think, I think what, almost 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then it went down to the 35, 25 range. Mm -hmm. I, I think what though needs to be said is the, 
the foresight that this community had. Hawkington was one of the first communities Absolutely. to yeah. adopt CPC. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's great. It's yeah. great that the community's been Basically. able to take advantage of it. Yeah. And, um, you know, to, to the point that uh, Mr. Catino makes often, you know, this is still, it's still tax money. It's still money that's coming out of our pockets. Um, you know, but it's good that we've been able to take advantage of that, that matching, um, you know, from other communities who haven't taken advantage of it. Mm -hmm. But we also need to understand that, you know, it's getting closer and closer to being just our money in that bucket. <laughs> yeah, with an 11% 11, 11 match, it's going to take us a lot longer to pay back things. Um, Mr. Kamalo, uh, the, the, the warrant and motions we have in front of us tonight, right, for that's consolidated into one document so it's easy to read and understand what we're doing. Yes. Do we sign the warrant or something prior to town meeting? The warrant will be signed tonight. The warrant will be signed tonight. And yes. this warrant reflects some changes in language in both articles and motions based on recent discussions and everything, correct? That is correct. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I covered the first two components. The one million dollars, the seven hundred and twenty, and finally there is one million eight hundred and five thousand four hundred and eighteen from general revenues, and for the purpose of meeting such appropriation to authorize the town treasurer to borrow. Um, provided, however, that said sum shall be reduced by the amount received as gifts or donations in support of the purposes of this motion. So I thought it was important that I highlight these three components because the board had previously discussed these issues. And this is based on extensive conversations with town council and the proponents. Who's attending the moderators meeting tomorrow? Yeah. Who's all, who all is on that yeah. list? Well, the, the, the whole list will include um, the chair of the appropriations committee, board of selectmen, school committee, town clerk, Town Council, um, the IT Director, uh, the School Superintendent, the Planning Board Chair, um, the, the Interim Finance Director as well. Okay, no one yeah. from CPC? CPC, we... Or Parks and Rec? Yeah, we may invite them at the time when if, if, if there are any specific issues to be discussed with this. So far, we've included the park and rec representative, school committee representative, in all the discussions with the with town council on this topic. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there's, there's no mention in here about any type of obligation for uh, raising of private funds. There's no specific <coughs> amount identified, and this was based on the most recent presentations by um, the school committee chair to the appropriations committee. Okay. Yeah. And did, did town council have an opinion on whether there's a, a mechanism to have anything in there which obligates uh, some some level of private funding um, he based on extensive review um, reviews and consultations with DOR he could not find a specific mechanisms other than specifying as the town has done in other similar appropriations uh, that the amounts that are re received as gifts or donations could be used to offset any costs that are related to the project. So it was left in general terms. Uh, he could not find any mechanism that would obligate the entities to a specific amount when in fact the proponents were saying that there's no specific amount that they would like to put forth. So, so if we raise 500 grand before this meeting, we can talk about that and then the number goes from 1-8 to 1-3. If we raise 50 grand, we can talk about that and the number goes from 1-8 to 1-750. If we raise 50 grand, talk about that, it passes, and then we raise 250 grand in July or August, that money can then be used to offset the cost of this 1 million eight. 
Is that correct? That is correct. And pay down that note or use that for debt service or? That's the private? Private money that would come in. Wasn't that a guaranteed 500000 on this? No. Most recent presentations by the by the chair of the school committee was uh, that there was no specific amount. That was the, yeah, that was the original discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I have first-hand knowledge that there's a significant amount of money that can be applied to this at some point. We're trying to figure out when. But to your point, it's not there yet. Yeah, it's... Uh, but when... That money still can be used. Even let's we go through town meeting, it's done, we're building the fields, and 200K comes in, or 250K comes in of that 500. So now we're at 300, let's say, some number. That 300 in September of 18 can still be applied against this town meeting vote. Correct. To offset it in a positive way for the taxpayer. Correct. Okay. Similar, similar to what you see on Article, I think in Article 8, uh, back on page 7. Where you have the library foundation applying 443,956 towards the payment of the bond premium for the library project. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, I. Um, can we go back so to the capital projects? I yeah. just saw one, and I was at the, I was at the school committee meeting for this one. Stage one campus road master plan. It says original request of three hundred twenty thousand, but we're borrowing four hundred. No, in fact, the that amount was revised upwards to four hundred thousand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't this. Yeah. So the amount is four hundred thousand. Okay. Pleasure. All right, what's next up on our agenda? Mm -hmm. So do we have to have a motion to to uh, approve and sign the warrant? <coughs> yes, please. Do we have a copy of the warrant itself? Yes, we have a copy of the warrant, uh, I believe. That we're going to actually sign. Can I see yeah. one of those, please? Yeah, we, we have extra copies. Two, four, five, one, two. No, one's <laughs> fine. <laughs> yeah. So, so just point of clarification, and from my own understanding, this warrant here tonight has been in draft form until tonight. Yes. This draft form has been circulated throughout the community at public meetings and so forth. Yes. Voting it tonight is inside the deadlines required for town meeting. Correct. And uh, this warrant matches the warrant and motions article or document previously discussed but takes the motions out of it. Correct. So, uh, let's read that motion mm -hmm. The only ones we had to go through are the ones that you mentioned. Everything else we've already uh, previously approved. Or are we doing, do you want to just do a general one or are we yeah. going to go, we the, go through it one by one again? Yeah. Uh, again, this this is the, the warrant with the articles. Then we will discuss the, the motions under the next topic. Mr. Chair, I move that the Board of Select and sign the warrant as distributed this evening for annual town meeting 2018. Second that. Any further discussion? This is one reason never to be chair. Mm -hmm. You have to sign all the baby papers. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So no, noted. Thank, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank, thankfully. We, we're talking about, we're all signs. 
Yeah. yeah, but he's no, but he has to initiate these pages every, every page. Oh, dear yeah. God. Yes. Whatever, 35 <laughs> copies. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what she said. So yeah. Maria asked me if John, could you come? I, I remember now, early? like, I was a little bit miffed. <laughs> Can you come significantly earlier for, for the uh, moderators' meeting tomorrow to sign yeah. all the yeah. copies? Yeah. Mr. Cotino, you need to know. Former chair is used to sign 17 copies. You will only sign eight copies, thanks to the it's Chapter accurate. Review Committee. Can you yes. double that, please? Make a motion. <laughs> <laughs> thanks to who? The Chapter Review Committee. Yeah, did, the change, did the change come through Thank the Chapter Review Committee or through like the... Oh, oh it was through the town bylaw. Yeah, yeah through the town bylaw. Yeah. If I may just briefly. So, yeah. last year from findings that the Charter Review Committee found and discussions with them about uh, certain things that they couldn't change in the Charter, um, I had brought up something about potentially changing some of the posting locations and so town council then found that we really shouldn't be having it posted at all of the churches in town because we can't really require it to be posted there due to religious and state requirement reasons. So it's been now made to places that are available to the public 24-7 so that we can make sure that everyone has access. Excellent, thank you. It's still 240. <laughs> okay. I, uh, I lost my link. I can't believe I lost my link. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so we've got a uh, motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Okay, so. Showing a lot of trees. Big packages. Make Mr. Regan happy with all this paper we're using. Good. Lots of trees to cut down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> think about a committee. Tree reuse committee. That would be a subcommittee of the. So, so are we so done then with the motions? No, no, we're now moving to the motions. So we're back to the original motions doc. Yes. Yeah, we'll go through this very quickly. Um, based on the actions of the board, uh, at previous meetings we are recommending that the board uh, review the following articles and we'll go through them one by one. Uh, do, we, do you want to so have got, a standing motion? Yeah, I request a standing yeah. affirmative motion to recommend annual town meeting articles. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Okay. Item one, accepting town reports. Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. So, Mr. Chair, are you calling for a vote? Oh, yeah. All those in favor? No, the votes. Yeah, I thought we Oh, sorry. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there's so a standing motion. So, and yeah, now you would call the vote. That's correct. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Imposed abstentions. Okay. Okay. Operating budget. Uh, previously, the selectmen, the board had uh, uh, put in a hold on this pending the outcome of the appropriations committee hearing. Uh, as I reported earlier, the appropriations committee uh, voted to recommend the budget as presented to them by the board of selectmen to town meeting for approval. Favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. And these votes and then, to support the motion as written. Should we be asked for our position on the motion at town meeting by the moderator? Correct. Yes. That, yes. That's my yes. understanding. That's how I'm voting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, again, <laughs> as we know, Mr. Mr. Hand. Apparently, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> The chair of the board of selectmen, and this may be decided differently tomorrow, but in past years, the chairs of the board of selectmen, school committee, appropriations committee, town manager, and the school superintendent stand up front and present a unanimous voice on the budget. Yeah, but I'm just talking in general about yeah. all these different motions we're going to weigh in on. This, this standing affirmative motion we have on the table right now 
is for the Board of Selectmen to approve the motion for the article as written. Is that a fair statement? Correct. But that's not that's not the end all, obviously, because it goes to town meeting and then it's taken there. So we're really just affirming our position on these various articles and the motion that's generally affirming the article. It's more than that. Okay. You're also confirming you have evaluated the motion and you support the motion. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Thank Rick. Yeah. Okay, number three. Number three, uh, revolving fund spending limits. Uh, when the board last considered this item, um, we have not specified the spending limits. The spending limits that you see starting on page 11 through, yeah, they are all on page 11, are similar to the spending limits that you supported in previous years, specifically in FY, uh, FY18. Chair, wasn't there some discussion about the school committee getting a revolving account? I see one for a net laptop initiative, but I thought there was a general revolving account for the school committee that they might consider for their for the special education. Yeah, that, that issue uh, did not receive any traction. I thought it required, what, what we heard from the school committee was that uh, uh, we needed further consideration, further explanation, and further discussion, and was not ready for prime time. So that did not make um, the the warrant this so year. So the concept of them having a revolving fund is in place in Hopkinton, but that specific revolving fund for other services is not for this year. Correct. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. S similarly, the state allows it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, similarly, there was prior discussion about setting up a revolving fund for the TAF fields. Um, upon further discussions with town council, it was concluded that that will not be necessary. The school committee, the town already adopted, I think it's chapter 71, um, that allows the school committee to set up that revolving fund. Outside of this vote here? Correct. So that's a possibility? Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, so uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed, any abstentions? Carries. Number four. The yeah, Article 12, again, the board wanted to receive feedback from the Appropriations Committee review in terms of how much would be transferred to the General Stabilization Fund. Uh, that amount is now $125,000. From the 118-270? Correct. So that's, that's Article 12. And again, the amount is $125,000. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So all those in favor of Article 12? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Carries. Okay. Okay, the transfer to OPEP similarly, um, the board had uh, put a hold on this article pending review by the Appropriations Committee. Uh, the motion is to transfer from general fund free cash the sum of $400,000 uh, to be credited to the OPEP Liability Trust Fund. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? That one carries. What's next? Yes, and I, I need to highlight, and this was said earlier by the auditor, uh, part of the motion involves also um, um, authorizing the Board of Selectmen and the tre Treasurer to execute a declaration of trust, creating an expendable trust for the purpose of holding monies appropriated to such fund. And the, the basic reason being um, creating this kind of a fund uh, actually earmarks this fund uh, for this purpose. Uh, anything otherwise would allow town meeting to be appropriate that money for other purposes. Oh, yeah. to restrict it. Yeah. What's next? Okay. Uh, pay as you go capital articles. Um, we wanted to confirm one more time that the board actually supports all the articles from all the capital requests from A through through N. Everybody good with these? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's nothing new in here, correct? No. Yeah, there's nothing new. 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Carries. Okay. Uh, article 39. 39? Yes. Yes. This is the nuisance and dangerous dog by law. Uh, when this was previously presented to the board, it, it um, fowl. Yeah, we included other animals, uh, including fowl. Uh, what we heard from the board was to simply focus the article on uh, bringing the existing bylaw into compliance with state laws, and this is what this bylaw does. Mr. Kamala, are we going to have someone come in here and discuss what the what the uh, where the designation of a, uh, a dangerous dog was. Did we have a discussion about that where someone was going to come in and kind of clarify some of this silliness? Yeah, there were questions raised in terms of how mm -hmm. to define a dangerous dog. Yeah. We had an Irish Terrier when I was a kid. It's about eight inches tall, and it was the cutest little thing. And it took a chunk out of a little girl's cheek, and unfortunately, it had to be put down. So, yeah. I mean, the cutest little thing can be a dangerous dog. That's it. Very subjective. Okay. Okay. Uh, <coughs> well, all right. <laughs> so, uh, all those in favor? Is there any further discussion on this one? Yeah. Uh, again, in, in terms of the definition of a dangerous dog. Uh, a dog that either, without justification, attacks a person or domestic animal, causing physical injury or death, or behaves in a manner that a reasonable person would believe poses an unjustified imminent threat of physical injury or death to a person or to a domestic or owned animal. Yeah, that's very, very subjective. But yeah. Maybe it needs to be. I want to discuss it further? Do we? Okay. All right. All those in favor? Uh, say to by saying aye. All those opposed? No. All abstentions? If the nose carry, I'll say no. Okay. I'll I abstain. just did not. Qualified I just to make this yeah, decision. Yeah, and that's why I'm understanding. Yeah, 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 me yeah. too. So, okay, so, so this is so the votes are zero, zero, two, two. zero. Uh, no, I, I'm a, it doesn't add up. I'm a one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's what. <laughs> you have to say. No, I didn't hear the others. No, yes, I didn't hear the others. Uh, is it? No, I'm abstaining. Do the vote again. Yes. Hang on, so leave the room. <laughs> so where does abstain fit in there? I, I would the abstain. Third third, it's the third category. I yes. would abstain. Okay. So, so Mr. Chair, in advance of the vote, you have to vote again, it sounds yes. like. My only comment is I'm all for protecting the citizens and I'm all for protecting the animals of Hockington. I personally don't feel I'm qualified to understand this bylaw or this proposed exactly. uh, change to our bylaw. And I, I would just need to be educated further before I could make a positive vote to support this as it is today. Yeah. I just don't understand it. That's all. I'm not against yeah. it or for or against it. It's just I don't understand it. Yeah. So specifically, this is what the the changes accomplished in terms of bringing the existing bylaw. There's an existing bylaw bringing it into compliance. Number one, uh, it brings the current bylaw into compliance with MGL Chapter 140, Section 157, 157A, relative to the statutory provisions that outline the process for nuisance and dangerous dog proceedings. In other words, if there's a dog that is declared dangerous, what is the process for holding that hearing? We don't have that in the current bylaw, now we outline that. Secondly, it also incorporates sections 157 uh, and 157A as stated in the, town, in the state bylaw in their entirety. We didn't, we didn't wanna go through the process of picking and choosing mm -hmm. yeah um, what it does is now the animal control officer can issue a temporary restraint order or temporary confinement orders when an animal is declared dangerous or a nuisance 
We don't have that currently in the bylaw. Um, this provision also gives the town the authority to take immediate action if needed. We don't have that ability currently. Um, I think overall those those are the those are the changes that are that are affected. And again, the attempt here is to bring our current bylaw into compliance with the current state regulations, providing for a hearing and giving the animal control officer the ability to take immediate action if required. What percentage and of the communities across Massachusetts do you think would have already adopted this by now? If you had to guess. No idea. Is it widespread used? Well, there's a statute that addresses this issue, whether a bylaw is so adopted a state or not. Statute. But right now, our bylaw conflicts with the statute. That's a new town planner. So uh, I'm glad we slowed this down a little bit. Mr. Kamal, what's your recommendation? Let the board support these changes. Why? Yeah. Um, for they now provide a clear, uniform process for dealing with these issues when they arise. And most importantly, we also have had instances where people call in to the animal control officer saying there is a dog that presents an immediate danger or threat to residents. Currently, we have no ability, or the animal control officer has no ability to temporarily restrict that animal. And what would be the, what would be the safeguard against a dog that's not dangerous, but some neighbor doesn't like the dog, therefore it becomes dangerous and calls mm -hmm. it and says, come get this dog out of here. That's, I my, think, exactly. that's my point yeah. right there. I think the safeguard is that there's now a hearing process clearly outlined. A hearing process. Yes. I think and this board has become pretty weak and wimpy when it comes to, you know, giving anybody any subjective authority on this stuff. I mean, you know, this is clearly a case. <laughs> I'm trying to agitate you over there. <laughs> trying to get me going. You're a dangerous dog. I'll bark it in a minute. No, I mean, clearly, no. This is this is something where this is something where it's giving it's giving the dog officer some legal authority to start a process that currently they don't have. Um, you know, it's a lot of this is taken from from the state the state bylaws. Um, trying to get in line with that because currently we're not um, you know it seems like whenever and, and I'm guilty of this too so I know I'm pointing at you but um, you know whenever we get to something where it's someone's opinion that you know you look and you say well this this dog is dangerous or this property isn't you know isn't being taken care of or this or that you know we start stepping back and saying uh, you know, that's just one person's opinion. But, you know, this is something that, that does deal with public safety <laughs> at, at a level, and it's, it's not just on the person's property. So, so Mr. Chair, we had a vote that wasn't really tallied correctly. Sure. We're going to take that vote again, correct? Yes, we will take Kamala, that vote. The, when we say that, so let's say the nuisance dog, let's say there's a dog that barks, someone calls it complains. Who goes out to look at that? As we sit at this very second, is it Bill Proctor or is it Liz Jeffries? Bill Proctor. So, Mr. Carmel, are you saying that um, nuisance and dangerous dog is defined under Chapter 62, Article 8? I mean, my, my question is how do you, who decides what's dangerous? It, is there is a definition that can be referred to in there? That's what, what was read earlier. Yeah. And it's defined as 136. 136A. I mean, I'm, I'm just concerned in that, like, we had an instance years ago with our own pet that was tied out in its own yard and a neighbor's dog got loose and ran in. My dog bit the other dog because it came into its yard and it was tied. And we went through the whole thing with a dog officer and combined, confined the dog for 10 days and the dog officer took one look at this old gray dog and laughed and said, oh my gosh, you know, this is an old dog and it's tied in its own yard. Um, you know, I think I 
clearly argued at that point the dog was not posing any danger. There was an intruder that came into his yard, but you know, I would want to be sure that there were safeguards that, you know, the people whose dog got injured were not happy about it, but my contention was the dog trespassed. So, you know, I, I just want to be running sure. away when your dog bit it? Dog came over to my dog, which was tied. <laughs> my dog did what any dog would do when it's defending his so, yard. I just want to make sure that there there are protections, that there is some determination as to what you know. Is this a, a spurious, unreasonable claim? And there's a difference between a nuisance and a dangerous dog, correct? Yeah, but this is included in here. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one thing I want to make sure of. There's a dog that's just barking. I don't want people to say that should be put down because a dog barks. Well, they can say whatever they want. There's going to be a hearing, and then yeah. if that's just all that's going on, and the people holding that hearing say, have a nice day, off you go. Can I move the question? Yep. Ooh. 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 Okay. Okay. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll come up with your hands in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. No. I'm abstaining. Okay. So we have three, one, one. I still don't. I'm still confused by it. Okay, what's the next one? Yeah, the last one is the pilot agreement. I, I, I honestly believe this one is not ready for prime time. We were expecting to receive a response from uh, the, the entity that is proposing uh, the solar farm in town. I did not receive that by the end of the day. Except though, I have an email from. Did he say so? Yeah, I gotta yes. get up. Yes, yeah, so. Mr. Chair, I'm gonna step off. Yeah. Yep. Yes, step off. Yeah. Again, I, I don't have any yeah, update. Yeah, it's not even an update. Yeah, 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 but we talked about this stuff. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mr. you can back. Somebody go get Mr. Her. Somebody go get Mr. Her. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Chief, can you find Mr. Herfars? Oh, here we go. <laughs> okay. Um, is that it? That's it on my list. Elaine, is there anything we missed? Sorry. Okay. Okay. And so do we have to? So we did the individuals. Do we have to vote the packet or anything else at this point? Or no. All right. So. Um, all right, then let's uh, let's jump to uh, liaison reports and board invites. Anybody have any liaison reports, Mr. Hur? I have nothing to report tonight. Okay, so Elementary School Building Committee, everything's going good there. Uh, June 9th is the ribbon cutting ceremony at Marathon School. One o'clock. Thirteen hundred. Nothing new tonight. Um, I don't have anything, but I know that about a week and a half ago, the Affordable Housing Trust Fund Committee did get together. I'm not sure if maybe Ms. Lazarus can give an update on that. I did attend the meeting. Uh, at the meeting, uh, there were three members present out of five, and they uh, elected a chair and a vice chair. Um, they discussed um, the mission of the committee, the source of funds that, that go into the, the account, and uh, set another meeting date uh, the end of May. Did they, I saw, saw on the agenda for previous meeting for chair and vice, did they vote a chair and a vice they chair? They did. Who are the chairs? So Aman Hadri chair? is the chair and Beth Malloy is the vice chair. Okay. Um, I, uh, yesterday we had the uh, marathon fund meeting uh, um, that uh, we picked uh, the, um, Recipients of uh, a $1,500 scholarship. There were three, uh, three male and three female scholarships went out, and the, the writings were, were wonderful. There was very difficult choices to be made. Um, those will be announced at uh, at the uh, scholarship uh, uh, event that they have uh, every year at the at the high school. So that's uh, that's what the fun meetings to go to. But yeah, it, it just it's really reassuring when you look at some of the, some of the writing that these kids do. It's, it was just wonderful. Okay, town manager's report. Uh, I have nothing further to report um, other than that during the course of this meeting we have received um, responses from the public when they heard that the, the selectmen are proposing a meeting on the 30th. 
there is a scheduled EHOP meeting uh, on that night. John, Elaine, and myself. Are so we can just go. We can go. We, we, we can just schedule it earlier than than uh, than the EHOP meeting. Okay. We'll just we'll just schedule so it. We'll, let's talk five. about that for a sec, though. The timing and work and stuff. So, what time do you need to be at EHOP? Six thirty. So, yeah. So, what time would you propose we have the meeting for the board of selectmen? Can, it, can people make five o'clock? This is Monday the thirtieth. Is that going to be enough time? An hour and a half. We got. Can we add something tonight? That we we had the. Uh, we're going to deliberate a little bit. Great. Sorry? The parade permit? The parade permit, yeah. For, for the girls on the run. That shouldn't be too bad. we got to get someone here, though, for that, right? Is, is there something wrong with moving it to Tuesday? Uh, uh, is it planning board meeting on Tuesday? Okay. Yes. I'm fine with either one. Or on Sunday. I, I can is do a little board? earlier on Monday. But we want to make sure okay. our colleagues from the planning board have enough notice in their work and so on. Yeah, I can, uh, we can send notice out to them. So why don't we, it's, it's okay for you? Okay, so let's, uh, want to do 4.30? It doesn't matter to me. I just want to make sure the planning board is mm -hmm. given. Yeah, so we'll get, we'll, we'll, we'll get, we'll get notice to them. Okay, so let's make it for 4.30 on uh, Monday. I like Mrs. Wright's face. I watch her faces. <laughs> I, I just don't know. That's a big board. 4.30 is really early. It's way outside of, you know, work hours. So Yeah, why don't we go Maybe for 5.30? Okay. Wait, what time do you have to be there? 6.30. And we're live that? at 6.30. You go live. Like do you remember they want here? us to? Yes, yes. yes they six. usually want us to appear um, well library. before 6.30. High school library. High school yeah. library. Yeah, high school yeah. library. Set up for the mics. And so forth. That would be tight. We'll be fine. Gotta give, gotta give three days notice for the posting of the meeting. Is that we gotta do three days notice? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm thinking days. of the protocol. Usually, you hope expects us to arrive perhaps is it 25. Yeah, right. yeah 25 mm -hmm. minutes before, so that they can test the mics and walk us through the setup. Can we so gotta be there at five after six. <laughs> You gotta hit makeup. <laughs> so, what is the agenda for Monday again? Let's go through this. Um, it was uh, any 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 final articles or any things that we had to do for town meeting. We're done with that. And then we have the planning uh, board. the uh, the uh, planning board and the um, parade. And the parade. So we could do the parade first at five. Five fifteen, we could do the planning board. We could do parade at five fifteen and planning board at five thirty. Be done at six, and you guys can run over to your event. Yeah, I think that I think it all worked. Fine. Does that make well, sense? Well, it does. But if I recall, our first meeting on the board of selectmen when we had that uh, appointment of uh, yeah, there's going to be four people. Cerule. We got to give them a chance to speak. Yeah, and then we need to make sure that our process for for voting that is nailed down before we begin, right? Yeah. That seems to be where we always kind of hit a snag is, you know, okay, what's the process? There's one seat open, there's four people, you know, are we all gonna do the paper ballot and then read off who voted for whom and, and then take the top person or the top two and then vote between them? You know, this is just what we, we need to nail down okay, before that, we get yeah. in. So, so we could put all names into nomination. Two hours. We could put all names into, Mr. Kamala, we could put all names into nomination on one motion, and then we could have a paper ballot, and we could... That's what we did before. And did we write we our name on that paper ballot? Yes. Yeah. 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 So yeah. there's no... We stand up in front of the community, but we do it sort of on paper so it's a little bit cleaner. Right. So that we're all voting simultaneously. At the same time. But, yeah. And then we, um, yeah, then we read them off. If there's a tie, then we have a runoff. Did we put did we put everybody in the nomination the last time around? I believe we did. Yes. I mean yeah. that that, take, that that should take five minutes. Uh, it did not before. <laughs> well, I know it didn't, but it should. Maybe we can use yeah. uh, the electronic system that comes. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, regardless of whatever we can have in place before then, if we can have it 
concrete nailed down. Mm -hmm. We should just make sure the process we followed last time was fine. Um, it's the question of do we need four candidates to talk to us? Do we know these candidates? I mean, I think you really need the chance I'm, to at least so, speak to the board and ask but I think questions. That, so there, there's one candidate on the list that I, I know is, uh, may have a conflict. Um, with the meeting or with, with the meeting? I don't want to get into why he may or she may have the conflict, but uh, it's not privy for me to talk about. So, uh, so there may be one person that can't make that meeting next week, but we don't know. Okay, so let's uh, if set do it we do a thing where if none, I mean, if one can't make it, then nobody speaks. We just no, go we by the resume. Plenty of meetings and appointments where people couldn't make okay. it. We just had to proceed. I mean, we can't. We can't wait forever to do these things, mm -hmm. I and mean, we're yeah. already a month without a member in that board. There's a lot going on. There's a lot, yeah. There's, they've got a lot of yeah. stuff happening now. I haven't heard it on Tuesday. Okay. So, five o'clock Monday. Where? And uh, right here. It's coming here. Whatever you want. Zip. Okay. I mean, Mr. Okay. Trojan. Sorry. Okay, we'll have it here. Yeah. Okay. Monday yeah. dress code, casual. Casual. <laughs> Mr. Chair, you will discuss this meeting date with the chair of the planning board. I will discuss it with the chair of the planning yes. board. What catches my attention is that the planning board normally meets on Mondays. Right. But they have a meeting that is scheduled on Tuesday. So. I'm assuming there must be a reason why they shifted from Monday to Tuesday. Yeah, the EHOP form. Because of the EHOP. Yeah. Well, we're going to be in advance of that. So. We're going to be in advance of the EHOP. Okay. If, if there is a problem with that, I mean. I will discuss I, it with I, the No, I can see how they would like to do it Monday because then that person can get, could get seated. But if we need to, could, could it be another day of the week, like Wednesday? Or do we have to have it Monday or Tuesday? Well, we've got to announce it. Right, but I just wonder if there was a fallback date. If you know, now we leave this meeting and you find out that people can't do it on Monday on their side. Well, just pick Let's another date. Okay. Let's uh, yeah. We at some point we have to, like Mr. Hurst said, at some point we have to. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's event. important we fill the seat. I'm yeah. flexible next week. Uh, if, so if, if let's, it doesn't um, work from Monday, we can't. Let's, we don't want to force the issue, but we want to get the issue resolved. Right. right. So I'm flexible with days next week as well. I okay. Too. Me too. All right. So let's uh, let's at this point until I to discuss it with the chair of the planning board. Let's uh, set it set a meeting for Monday at five o'clock. Roger that. Okay. Future board agenda items. Anything. Talk about parking at some point, I think, but uh, that's just me. Okay, with that, the chair will entertain a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes. Yes, um, I'd just like to say something. You know, I was going to wait until next next week's meeting, but as we're going to be trying to make that as quick as possible, uh, I'd rather just handle it now. Um, as everybody knows now, uh, I am not running for re-election. Uh, all that's shut down. I just want to thank everybody that I've served with on the board uh, over the past nine years, um, you know, Matt Zedek, uh, Michelle Gates, Ben Palaco, R.J. Dorney, um, John Mosier, uh, all of you, um, you know, I think I said Michelle Gates. Um, just want to thank you all for a great nine years. Uh, I want to thank the voters of Hopkinton for their support uh, over, over that time. I want to thank Mr. Kamalo and Ms. Lazarus and everybody in town hall for their for their support. Of course, my family and friends, um, specifically Mr. Hurt. Uh, you dragged me into this nine years ago, uh, but uh, I, I couldn't be happier for it. And something's so. wrong with this picture tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can ask yourself if you're still happy you did or yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But uh, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure serving the, the townspeople of Hopkinton. 
um, and uh, you know, I look forward to finding other ways that I can that I can serve as well in the future. Thank you very much, Todd. You dragged me in too. So. Well, I, I just want to say far be it for Mr. Sestari to be thanking us. I mean, yeah. we owe him a world of gratitude. And even though I've only been here working with you for two years, um, I personally will miss you very, very much on this board. Um, I have come to have the deepest respect for your insight, for your questions, for your um, understanding of town government and I, I look to you for guidance so often on on matters and uh, the shoes are going to be big to fill and you're going to leave a big empty seat uh, next to me on this board so uh, thank you so much Todd um, we're, we're going to miss you. you an awful lot thanks so I've had the luxury of knowing Mr. Sestari a lot longer than he's been a selectman um, but I will uh, I can say with no uncertainty, he's done a great job. And I followed him from his campaign. I held a couple of signs for him for his campaign. Um, I, as Claire says, I look to him for guidance and advice. Uh, he's level-headed despite what the camera shows with, me, with he and Mr. Her. He's very level-headed. He's <laughs> able to see the forest for the trees. <laughs> Uh, he's got a lot of qualities that I admire, and we will miss him. We'll absolutely miss him. I'll miss uh, the intermeeting texts. I'll miss the uh, uh, the interactions that we have. So uh, I certainly appreciate everything that you've done over the last nine years as a selectman, <laughs> as a citizen, and then as a fellow selectman for the last two years, how much you've helped me. So thank you very much, and you're not done. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, I still have at least one more year to go, and. You're still a guy I'll bounce some questions <laughs> off, just not executive session stuff, perhaps. <laughs> uh, I, um, I'm sad to see Mr. Sestari leave. Uh, you know, the great thing about uh, our relationship <coughs> with the board and outside the board is uh, when we're here verbally having debates and discussions and sometimes arguments, which are uh, always interesting and sometimes fun, um, when we're not doing that and we're looking at each other, our eyes are having an argument with each other. So, <laughs> I know him extremely well, he knows me extremely well, and our eyes can have a brawl going here back and forth, and you guys don't even know it. Um, but it's been a great uh, honor and pleasure serving with you for the town, with the town of Hopkinton uh, for so many years. I think you've done a great job. You bring a really good perspective into the discussion and debate, and uh, that will be missed. Those will be hard shoes to fill. Um, and we're going to have to work with training others to serve on the board, uh, whether I'm back or not. Uh, we got to make sure that uh, the town can continue forward. You've done a lot of great things. The underrides are Todd Sestari's ideas in both years. Uh, he was the driver behind the underride. A lot of people talk to me about the underride as being sort of the fiscally conservative person, at least viewed that way sometimes. Uh, but really, Mr. Sestari did the math behind the underrides and understood the underride concept before I did and brought it to the board and so uh, he deserves all that credit and uh, just so many other things I could name. The bond rating is way up because of Mr. Sestari's fiscal uh, management skills I think and his uh, understanding of technology and bringing the town's technology infrastructure along uh, under his uh, voice and guidance uh, over the years too I think is something that he can be very proud of. So. Uh, it's been a great run. Uh, I may join you on the sidelines. I don't know. Uh, but uh, uh, I really enjoyed starting with you. It was a great honor to bring you into this uh, business and uh, look forward to appointing you very soon if, we're, if, if I'm back or look forward to getting appointed with you soon if neither one of us <laughs> is back. Thank you for a great job. Thanks. You had, you have some yeah, just one more add-on. Um, so Mr. Sestari is he's very good at being stealth kind of blending into the woodwork, as my mother used to complain I never could do. And I heard a story of uh, one Saturday morning down at the Golden Spoon, a bunch of the people that I may or may not have <laughs> breakfast with each week were talking about how I, Brendan Tedstone, was the only one on the board of selectmen who knows what the town was doing or knew what he was doing or something of this sort like that. And uh, Todd was sitting right next to them and a couple of pointed questions and they're like you don't know you you don't know what you're talking about or something like that and it was hilarious when he came up and told me described who they were I didn't even need him to describe who they were I knew who they were right <laughs> off the bat 
and uh, I just thought it was hilarious that he could sit here with a, sit there with a very straight face and uh, listen to these guys mm -hmm. uh, say what they said and just very inconspicuously and, and very quietly kind of slink away and not get in a confrontation. I thought it was a, a great story. And, uh, it's kind of indicative of what he is. He's, he's able to take it all in, uh, not emotionally, and process it and tell you why you're wrong. So what? <laughs> <laughs> on, on marathon morning, I went to the uh, Western Nurseries event. I'm walking through the parking lot, and someone starts calling me from behind. Hey, Catino! <laughs> Catino! <laughs> As they got closer, I said, oh, oh, you're, I thought you were John Catino from the Board of Selectmen. I said, no, he's my neighbor, though. Oh, is he a good neighbor? Yeah, yeah, he's a good neighbor. I said, he's good on the board, too. Oh, you're on the board? <laughs> <laughs> Which you're is just guy. how I like Absolutely. it. Absolutely. just how I like it. You're the shadow. Yeah. 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 Well, that being said, I, I'm lucky because Todd does live right across the street from me. And, um, you know, it's, it's just great having him as a neighbor. During the winter, I don't like it because I, I could be up... Uh, uh, cleaning off the snow off my roof or doing something like that. And, and Todd's always good because uh, I always know that there's somebody watching. I was, I was actually up fi fixing some shingles the other day while he was, in, he was on vacation, and there was nobody home in my house. And I just said, hmm, if I fall off now, it's going to be days before somebody knows it. So that, that he's, he's just a great neighbor to have. And, and, you know, and, and really, to have, to have the two of you uh, uh, the experience on my right and left uh, as a chair, it really has been, has been great. Uh, you know, between you guys, every once in a while, it, it's been tough being chair, because being the elder statesman on the on the board, I don't know when to sometimes stop the two of you, but it's really great because it it, it brings up the debate, and and that's what they, we're we're really going to miss that, um, the 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 effect you two have on each other, um, but it, but it gets the uh, it, it really gets everything going, and 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 we get to the root of uh, of most of the. Uh, uh, things we have to deal I with. Think, I think the, the great thing about the boards over the last nine years uh, that I appreciate has been that um, there's, there's no shortage of discourse uh, about different articles or you know, different, different uh, motions. And, you know, yeah, you know, we can, we can keep the town moving in a common direction. Uh, not everybody's getting along well all the time on every issue. We don't always agree on every issue. Um, but I do think that, you know, to, to take a phrase from Mr. Herb, um, the boards that we've been on have learned to live, learn, and move on. And it's not a personal thing up here. I hope it doesn't become a personal thing for future boards. Uh, it's a shame when, when you know, the office uh, kind of comes down to circus level and people are just watching it for entertainment. Uh, you know, I remember talking with uh, Mrs. Pratt a couple of years after I was elected, and I was asking her you know, why she hasn't been coming to the meetings anymore, you know, because at first she came every now and then, and she just says, you guys are boring. <laughs> she says, you talk about stuff, you vote on it, and then you move on. There's no yelling and screaming. <laughs> and, uh, but I think, I think that that's, that's a good thing. So, uh, but uh, I wish you all the best, and I, of course I wish Hopkinton the best. So thank you, though. Thank you. Well, we, this, yeah, there's still small meetings to go before. Uh, yeah. and you still have town meetings and, to go. Well, yeah. And yeah. I can assure you, Mrs. Pratt still yes. routinely will come up with comments like that regarding <laughs> so, our board. So, Mr. Kamalo, you must have a whole bunch. Yes. Um, I wish I could say it in Zulu. <laughs> <laughs> it's it hard. It's, I think, on behalf of town hall staff and myself, I. I really want to say it's been an honor and a great pleasure to work alongside you. Uh, clearly, your commitment, your dedication uh, to public service and the common good is exemplary. Uh, I can tell you that I have personally learned so much from working with you. Um, your willingness to listen your willingness to share your intellectual thoughts on issues that come before the board, and most importantly, 
you're, you are, you're always available. When, when I've called you with any question, if you can't answer before that at that point, you always come back to me. Uh, uh, and your regular visits to town hall are well appreciated. You always come down there uh, with a smile. You're always kind. Uh, you speak to different people in the office. We, we will really, really miss you. Um, uh, overall, it's been a great pleasure working alongside. Well, you know, and again, um, you know, Mr. Kamalo, it's, uh, you know, I've, I've learned an incredible amount from you. Uh, you've really guided me through the process. Uh, to, to give my insights and opinions is easy, but to you know, actually learn how all of this works when you're not, uh, when you haven't been in, in public service before, you know, that's more of a chore and you've helped me through that. Uh, you know, I, I shared with Mr. Kamalo a couple months ago as, as I was debating whether or not to run again. I said, you know, part of me is thinking that if I don't run, I'll finally be able to sit down and have dinner with, with uh, Norman, as Norman, instead of Mr. Kamalo. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I've never felt that that would be appropriate now, but, uh, you know, he's a, a great guy. And um, anybody who ever questions his work ethic or his care for the town, um, they just don't know Norman. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a pleasure. Thank so. you. And there's dozens of other people out, uh, out there that I'd like to thank, but uh, I'll, I'll try to do that in person. People who helped me get elected in the first place and kind of kept me going and, and, you know, the chiefs and town clerks and everybody else. So thank you. And I want everybody to know that that I did my darndest to keep him, keep him wanting to run again, and push him hard. But uh, we knew he had enough. But thank you, thank you for for, for being nine years. And Tana Popkin, thanks you. I think so there's a motion on the table, though. There is, <laughs> and it's been seconded. All those in favor of aye. adjourning, aye. say aye. aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? We stand adjourned. Thank you, everyone. See you on Monday.